This may be the most jam-packed podcast of all time, Michael. Michael, we have no time. It's the end times. This is one of those weeks where I don't even know if we're going to get to any goddamn questions because so much. the Game Awards was yesterday, and there was a whole week worth of news, and uh, we don't have time for pleasantry. So, hey, everybody, Rage Like Podcast. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mike. And uh, last night was the Game Awards. Yes. Um, now, before we uh, jump right in, uh, which we're going to do, um, I, I would like to just say something really briefly about the Game Awards. Uh, and I think that you and I were remarking on this as we were watching it that, like, okay, so uh, everybody knows uh, who listens to the show or who knows me or whatever. I don't give two shits about, like, people getting awards for stuff. Like, yeah. traditionally, I feel like the Game Awards, uh, they always give it to, like, whatever the darling of the year is, right? It's always, yeah. like, the one year that Walking Dead came out and The Walking Dead got everything, even though that was, like, the year that... I mean, you know, there a lot was, of great games came out that th- year. There was a lot of good stuff, right? Or even The Last of Us, which I think is a good game, but like, is it the best game? I mean, I don't know. I have my own thoughts about that. Let's not get into that conversation. I think story wise, it is, but let's um, not go into that. But this year, it was like I was watching it, and you know, like the Super Bowl, I was watching it for the trailers. But what I <laughs> noticed was that, boy, they spent a lot of time giving out certain awards, and then sometimes Jeff Keighley would just get up there and be like, all right, best indie game, this guy. Best storyline, this guy. Best music, like literally that quickly. Like, like uh, barely enough yeah. time for the audience to clap before they went on to the next thing. Yet they had time for like four minutes worth of like a Red Dead concert and like a Devil May Cry cry five concert and they let ninja get up there and talk for like three minutes and it was like what yeah. about the actual devs who made these games like i don't know if lucas pope because we didn't get to watch the whole thing but i don't know if lucas pope got a chance to actually walk up on stage but that motherfucker made Oberdin, and i know that this year we've got god of war and red dead and fucking everything under the sun but yeah. like Oberdin was good and i think he should have gotten two minutes to go up there and be like thank you i uh, this game i really blah 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 like because that motherfucker retweeted me when I we played the Oberdin, and like I'm I'm proud of that. It was a gr- <laughs> it's a really good game. Um, but I was laughing because yeah, like the one of them was the best fighting game of the year. Yeah, it was Dragon Ball Fire. They were just like Dragon Ball Fires. They just keep moving. Yep. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then the Facebook page for it was like Dragon Ball Fires one. I'm like, do you guys honestly care based on how they reacted to that? Yeah, <laughs> it was weird because it was just like they just. They, and what was weird was that they would stop, like when they gave the guy that won uh, for the, the uh, Arthur Morgan as like the best oh, yeah, voice Roger actor, Clark. they let him like come up and talk, you know, they let like Ninja and uh, uh, what's his name, the Fox guy, Sonic Fox. Sonic Fox, they both got to go up there, but it's like, yeah, I mean like the Dragon Ball Fighters guys should have got at least as much respect, I mean not to, like I'm not trying to say that, like, I understand that Sonic Fox and Ninja are like really big personalities, and that people who tuned in probably wanted to see them. Yeah, but Sonic Fox like won four Dragon Ball Fighters. Does this hurt of it? So it that much weirder to me? Yeah, it's just so strange. Yeah. Uh, so we now th- it was just weird. It was all. It felt oh, very super weird. It felt very rushed in some. It felt like they expanded some of the stuff that wasn't as important, and then contracted the stuff that was as important for a for a show where what like two years ago Jeff Keighley got up there and was basically just like fuck Konami they robbed Hideo Kojima oh, yeah, that's right <laughs> like in the middle of this thing I feel like this year they were focused a lot more on just like the spectacle of video games is not as much on like the hard work that people put into video games um, but in any case we're just gonna run down a few things here um, before we really quickly uh, so game of the year I think it was really strange that God of War got it. I think it's amazing that God of War got it. Um, the nominees were uh, AC Odyssey, which no, in no way, shape, or form should have won that. Celeste, God of War, Spider-Man, Monster Hunter, and Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, and it's it's weird. I just, I mean, I think God of War is a great game. I just don't know if I would think of it as the best game that came out this year. Literally I don't know. last like, week you were telling me the opposite when you were drunk, <laughs> so now I'm confused. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I, 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 I've been wrestling back and forth. I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess it's just yeah, like, we had this long conversation. Like, like I'm telling the audience this last week when we were outside of Chris's, right? About what should get the game of the year, and you're like, I don't know. God of War should, and now you're telling me the opposite, right? No, now. no, 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 no. I never said that. I made a case as to why God of War should get it, but I've never actually sure put that down. Did. 
that stuff. Also, <laughs> also, also, let us not be bringing up things that Drunk Jeff has said <laughs> on the podcast. Drunk Jeff's an idiot. We all know this. He had a good he had a good argument. I, the guy <laughs> knows how to talk, but you shouldn't listen to him. He's a real jack off. So um, <laughs> you should never trust me with us. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, we got a lot from Red Dead 2. Uh, Red Dead 2 got a lot of different stuff. Um, yeah. And then there was, I still think that best VR AR game went to Astro Bot. And Astro Bot was good, but fucking Beat Saber is better. Beat Saber is like, great, but I only played one of those. So I'm sorry. Uh, actually, no, you played both of those, didn't no, you? No, I didn't play Beat Saber. You didn't play Beat Saber? We were going to, but you were too tired. That's true. It's a very intense game. I don't want to do it when I'm tired. I'm tired. It's not right a now. good thing to play tired. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so needless to say, weird choices, in my opinion. But we did get a shit ton goddamn load of trailers. So many. Uh, so we're going to just go through. Oh, but before we, before we start, <laughs> let me just keep backing this up more. <laughs> um, before we start, though, I did find it a little strange that we didn't see, because I was sure that we were going to see either some Sekiro or some Death Stranding there. And I was kind of surprised that neither one of those showed up. That uh, yeah. that neither there wasn't a, a new trailer for either one of those. Like there was some big stuff in here, but there was some really interesting stuff. But I feel like the most interesting stuff was indie, or there was stuff we already knew about. Like there yes. wasn't as many big surprises. I thought. Yeah, one of them, one of them, which I'll get to. I guess I was basically told like a few days beforehand that it was probably going to happen. Yeah, and I was just like, well, if it's true, that'd be great. And if it isn't, you know, I guess kind yeah. Of thing. And it was, and I was happy. Uh, was it Journey to the Savage Planet, our first trailer for today? It was, it was not, but it looks savage. Uh, this this is one of those interesting... I feel like we got two or three... A lot of space this a year. A shit ton of space games a lot of spa- announced. I'm super cool with that, but we got this game, and it's basically just... It seems like a, a weird kind of like grungy alt future thing with like a corporation it's basically just a, a a cut scene of panning around and everything's kind of in shambles it's kind of like oh the the super core welcomes you to your new job here on this outpost and then there's like kind of rubble and like guys in spacesuits and a- dead aliens and stuff the giant like alien chicken head yeah it's interesting it seems like it's an interesting art style but this is one of those ones where it's like this is cool and all but you got to show me some game before I'm actually going to get like excited because anybody yeah. can make a good cut scene and that seems to be all that this is. Um I don't know. Are you do, do you have any thoughts in particular about this? Well, the um the little uh live action animation dude of saying, "Hey, you know, welcome to all this stuff and all this cool shit." It reminds me of uh when they had Fred Willard and Wally. Oh yeah. Doing that? Yeah. Yeah, it totally yeah, does. I was getting that kind of vibe of that sort of like idea that they're trying to get across. Yeah. I always find it weird whenever they mix live action with cg these days where i'm just like uh. it's strange but it always like there it always tries to do something silly with it though yeah which is why sometimes i usually appreciate it usually if it does something serious with it then it just feels weird i don't know i was like i was pretty cool in wally up until the point where they showed actual humans and i was like wait a minute what's going on here hello dolly exists but then there's also cgi people in this world it was really uh, weird that's weird Anyway, I don't know. This one seems a little bizarre. I mean, this is from Typhoon Studios, and 505 is putting it out. I mean, like, I'm a big fan of Space Man, so if it's cool, cool, but, like, there are too many games for me to be excited about something that's just a cutscene at this point. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. From there, uh, we got a really funny one. If you are a fan of the Stanley Parable, Stanley Parable is coming to consoles. Uh, Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, but... Um, it's the way it's announced that makes it so much fun, though. Yeah, I mean, honest to God, like I missed the I've missed the narrator from the Stanley Parable, uh, but apparently they're like doing a little bit of work on the game. They're putting in some new endings and stuff, um, and yeah, I mean, like that's a great. I, it is kind of weird that you think about it, and, like Stanley Parable's never actually been out on consoles before. Yeah, like uh, when you really <laughs> think about it out, like you say it out loud, you're just like, how did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> Like in all of the all the rage of putting out like what the orange box and like yeah. portal and uh, you know every single like thing is being re released on a console of some kind no matter what it is yeah but it seems Stanley like a no brainer of all things not on there it's weird it's it's interesting because man that was such a such a f- ahead of its time game like um, yeah I don't know I I. The only problem with this is that I have played a lot of the Stanley Parable. Like, Amanda and I played a sequential of it, and we went through most of the endings, and I don't know if I'm really interested in going back and playing it 
to see well the problem is that like i don't know if i want to organically try to find new endings oh, okay because i feel like i'm just going to run into the old endings um i don't know i don't know it's but, very much for the person who's never played it and has only heard great things yeah i agree i agree or just they want it on a console and and if that's you gentle listener Play the Stanley Parable. It really a, it, should. It's a really fun game. It is funny as hell. Um, yeah. I mean, the narrator alone makes it worth it. Absolutely. Like, it's it, it's one of the first that I can remember of the, like, player versus narrator uh, things. It's basically the... the There's a few of those around that time. Yeah. The video game equivalent of um, uh, Duck a Muck. Yes, the, the actually. Animator versus Daffy yeah. one. Yeah. Um, so It yeah. really is that, and I loved it for it. Do you even play it? You should play it because it's good. Uh, let's see. From there, we jumped into Among Trees, which is going to be a Steam game uh, from Fjord Interactive. Fjord Interactive. Fjord Derber. Um, York Park. I got to tell you, Michael, that in the year 2018, when I see a trailer like this, don't get me wrong. It's a beautiful trailer full of nice pastel colors and outdoor environments. Um. It doesn't do anything for me because it just looks like an art project. Well, there's so many games that are like this that where it's like the trailer is just a lot of kind of beautiful outdoor stylized things that I'm like, okay, well, what of it, right? Like, yeah, I just put, finished playing Red Dead Two, where all I did was walk around among the trees, right, and do cool shit. So you got to give me something here, game, <laughs> right? Well, well, like, okay, so I mean, my first guess is that it's going to be a survival game because we see like a tree being cut down, and we see like cooking in a like a cook pot full of stuff and like growing stuff, and I'm like, oh, is this just going to be like you got to survive out in the woods? And if so, is there something more interesting than just that? Because the long dark and Minecraft and uh, yeah. one on the raft. There's Everything a, else. <laughs> there's a lot of survival games out there. Fucking Fallout 76 has a hunger meter in it. Like, yeah. you got to give me something. Well, fucking Red Dead has a hungry meter at this point. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. It's very true. So, yeah, I mean, like, hey, uh, you know what? Again, just like the, the like that first one, show me a little bit more. Like, show me your moves. I, you know what? Okay, <laughs> this is this is a thing that I have to I have to take a brief sojourn on is that like i understand a lot of times when people listen to the show that like they could look at this trailer and be like oh that looks really interesting to me and it's mostly because there are so many games out there that like i don't i like there is no time to play all the good games anymore and so you need to be i need a hook i need a like no it's a draw it's, it's true for a lot of stuff like that's how i'm with tv right now yeah it's like there's so much good tv you have to give me something to draw me in right away right in fact it's even it's even gotten to the point with both games and media and like tv yeah. and movies where it's like it could even be like hey this is a really like i watched uh um there's a uh, YouTube channel called Movies with Mikey. I don't know if you ever watched that. I've heard of it, but I've um, never seen it. Where they make a, 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 he makes a case for why, like, Pushing Daisies is a very good show. I love that show. And I watched it, and I was like, that seems like a very good show. I don't have time to watch it. I mean, like, I'm doing other things. I do not oh, have okay. time to sit down and watch a show. So it's like, I don't even need it just to be good. I need it to be good and have something that makes me go, ooh. Like, I want to watch that Hero Mask that just came on Netflix. Uh, that anime is, uh, thing. Anyway, not sure. I'd have to find out. <laughs> like it, it, like it's got to be something. It's got to be multiples of things. So like, I'm not saying that Among Trees looks like a bad game. It just looks like something that I'm gonna look at the actual gameplay of it and go, oh, it's just a survival game. Okay, yeah. Bye bye. There's too many games. There are two. There just, are two just in the game awards alone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, here's one uh, coming up after that was one that I don't think I don't know that anybody saw this coming. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Like, did we see that Square Enix Avengers game? No. Did yeah. we see the Rockstar Superman game? No. But we saw Ultimate Alliance 3, and not just Ultimate Alliance 3, but Ultimate Alliance 3, and it's a Switch exclusive? Which is fucking crazy, because there were rumors that they want, they were probably going to make more after they re-released 1 and 2. Yeah. And so everyone's like, well, that has to mean they're going to make more. And then they didn't... But they made more, but on the Switch, which I think is the most interesting thing about that. More well, than also, do we know if this is timed? I don't. I didn't look it up. Is if this is a timed exclusive or not? I don't know. Everything I'm finding so far says that it's they made a deal with Nintendo, but I don't I haven't heard anything about it's timed or not still. And then who is it? Uh, who's making it? The, I feel like it was a specific uh, that team I'm ninja. Not sure. Team ninja. Oh, okay. Team ninja is making this game. 
Team Ninja is making the Marvel superhero game with the Switch exclusive. What mad lib logic is this? I don't know. <laughs> I just hope Cyclops is in it because he wasn't in two. Well, do you think that if this does really well, then they'll make another one of those, what, the X-Men, uh, what were the what oh, were the X-Men, X-Men Legends. Legends games? Yeah. Um, I mean, like, you know, hey, it's about goddamn time that somebody cashed in a little bit on the current Marvel hysteria. Uh, I'm surprised it took them this long, but I think part of it was that people kept saying they wouldn't buy some of these games without X-Men characters in it. Oh, and you think that they now that they've got the X-Men back or whatever? It's very much like it very much feels like that, especially since Wolverine's the only guy in this trailer that's an X-Men character. Yeah. Like it feels like he was like a last minute addition in the middle of them making this trailer. Yeah. Uh well, I mean, I don't know. And the other thing is it looks really good. Like uh, this trailer, you know, it looks like a fun game. So, it's uh it's Scarlet Witch. There's Medusa from the Inhumans. So, tip, tip, tip. Yep. Anyway, yeah. um, but I don't know. I mean, like, great. I, I'm excited I, personally. I never actually played any of those games. I loved them. Uh, uh, the first one's really good. The second one had a weird version of Civil War. Uh-huh. But I also discovered uh, in the second one how well me and my brothers work together in a four player game. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, holy fuck, that was like hurting cats. Uh, oh shit! It's been ten years since the last one of these came out. Wow. Yep. All right. Oh, and the game's being published by Nintendo. That means it's probably a, a lock, like Bayonetta, right? Yeah, and I'm totally cool with that. Yeah. You know, that's I, I think it's a great idea. Switch is really making a name, really making a, a case for itself recently. They really know. went for third party as, as really hard on this time around. Yeah. Um, and I'm proud of them. Uh, and then it's, I, and then what? Once it comes out, we're going to be drowning in the tears of one million pc ps4 and xbox people who are like but i want to play it yeah there's gonna be some of those people yep yep Uh, but i fuck you i'm gonna play this game (laughs) (laughs) i was watching uh what was that i was uh oh it's it's the uh red dead uh, the pc master race and then Red Dead is not on the PC. Oh, yeah. Saltiness. I, I ran up against some of that in like a YouTube comment section somewhere, and I was just like, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. When Isn't just... Spider Man like that, too? Uh, Probably. I mean, yeah, if I remember correctly, it's a Sony exclusive. Yeah, Spider Man. No, so... Spider Man got a war, both PS4, you know, obviously got a war, but Spider Man, yeah, as well. Yeah, they're, they're, the tears from that one is just as good. <laughs> I, I, think that's, I think that's the world that we live in. You know, I think that that's the way that you're going to get people to sign on to your ecosystem is Absolutely. by you have to have a draw because if everything just also comes out on the PC, like it used to be there was a technical reason for it is yeah. like, you know, only this console could run this type of game. Uh, but now I feel like it's like, no, they're all just basically PCs. And so if you don't sign some kind of actual piece of paper that says, no, you can't put this out on the fucking, you know, whatever, the Xbox One, that it's not going to come out of the Xbox One. Um, from there, there was a very, very strange, very, very strange trailer with the McLaren 570S uh, car is in Rocket League and it's in Rocket League. But why would you want it when the DeLorean and the Batmobile are in it, is all I'm saying. Uh, you know, I wonder about, I wonder, I Rocket League, to me, is weird. Like, they, they keep making these pa- these car packs of different, like, cars, and I'm like, does it even matter? Like, you're playing a, it's like you're playing soccer. Who cares yeah. what their, who cares what the hairstyle is on your FIFA guy, like, on your FIFA car Rocket Man? Well, some of them do uh, some cool shit, last I remember, but. They have, like, better power? Well, or something. Well, some of them actually like have specific things that they do, like as just like a cosmetic thing. Uh-huh. Like the DeLorean, if you go fast enough, it looks like it's gonna go back in time. Oh, or whatever. But it doesn't actually change. It doesn't the really change game the play. game. Okay. You just look kind of cool. All right. So I think that's kind of neat. You know what? I'm not a car <laughs> guy. I'm not a Rocket League guy. I'm not the guy to ask about this. It was the first kind of darling before Fortnite. Yeah. Kind of thing because it, it was a free PlayStation Plus game at first. Oh Everybody yeah. Everybody was addicted to it, and now everyone's addicted to Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure still plenty of people playing Rocket League. Um, anyway, from there, we got a trailer for Hades, which if you haven't watched, we already played. Um, Hades is the latest Supergiant Games game, and uh, it's about Hades' son attempting to escape from the underworld in a roguelike kind of top-down hacking ac- action-slashy type of thing. 
Uh, when you die, you go back. It resets everything. It's kind of randomly generated. Uh, by God, is it an amazing game. It was so good that after the video was done, I ended up playing it for like an hour. I played and it I for... I had to work the next day. <laughs> yeah, at like midnight. Yeah, he wanted to play it for another hour. I ended up playing it a little bit more today. I found out a bunch of stuff. Oh, really? Oh, uh, you know when you give the gifts to people? Uh -huh. Those are like modifiers that you could turn on that give you like different little powers and oh. stuff. Yeah. It's great. Art style's great. Voice acting's great. Music is great. Gameplay is great. It's in early access right now on the Epic Game Store, which we'll talk about in a minute. But um, yeah, it's nice to see uh, another super giant game, game, games game come out. Um, and it was nice that it was, uh, and it's out right now. Yeah, I mentioned it at work, and the one of the guys like literally like stopped working, and he's like, "I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta take her or something." <laughs> and then he had like bought it like right after that because he's a huge fan of that studio as well. Oh, they're so good. I mean, the Transistor and, and Bastion are great. I think that. Uh, that Pyre, I've heard a lot of good stuff about, but I never really got into. But yeah, um, it's a, a wonderful little game, um, and yeah, it's out on the on the Epic Game Store. Like I said, we'll get to that later. But that was one that was a real highlight for me. That's what I was saying it's about so like fucking good too. There wasn't a lot of like big, you know, like big AAA announcements. Like here's the new David Cage game. Here's that thing that Ken Levine's been working on. Here's a new. Here's a tease for. Dark Souls 4, here's the Metroid trailer, here's that Superman game. Yeah. But like fucking Hades is cool. And it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's also uh early access. So, you know, there's that. Which I'm still having a hard time figuring out how. <laughs> I think I, I, I think I figured out how. Uh there's a bunch of like I think that when you when you buy weapons in the game, there's a bunch of empty things. I just oh, think okay. that those are like not filled in yet. Makes sense. I think that they're probably gonna add more gods that give you buffs and stuff later on. So oh, yeah, that one was yeah, because we only saw what Zeus, Aphrodite, and Poseidon. Poseidon, yeah. So anyway, I can't I mean like I'm a I'm a big old fanboy for super giant games. I was a big fanboy for super giant games before the game even came out because it's great Kasavin works there. I don't fanboy at all. Oh, okay. But when I went to E3 the first, second time, mm -hmm. uh, Greg Kasavin was there showing Transistor, and I was like, oh, my God, it's Greg Kasavin! Because, like, the thing is that I, like, I don't, uh, like, some people get all crazy about devs, but, uh -huh. like, from my age and from where I am, it's like I would get giddy about seeing, like, the people from GameSpot. Like, I saw... Ryan Davis. I was like the year before he died, like walking to an appointment. I was just like, oh my God, it's that game journalist that I love so much. <laughs> like, uh, who are these? You guys made, what was it? Call of Duty? Oh, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> Look, Ryan Davis is over there. That guy's funny as fuck, man. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That sounds I, pretty rad. Anyway, uh, from there, man, it has been a long time on this one, but we finally got uh, Patrice Desoulet's. Uh, we got another trailer for his new game. There was actually a tease for this. I think it was either a year or two it was years a while ago. Back, actually, yeah, called Ancestors: The Humankind Odyssey, which basically looks like it's a survival game where you're playing as like a primate and you're trying to survive. And there's a lot of like kind of like I don't know, like it. it rem the fact that this is a this is the same guy who made Assassin's Creed, right? Like, yeah, kind of. Assassin's Creed with monkeys? Is that what we're looking at here? Or like, well, it's like super Assassin's Creed ancestors kind of thing. Yeah. Instead of going back in time to find out some ancient Italian thing, you're going back in time to find out the missing link almost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Like kind of swinging around and uh, like they show kind of working with like multiple um, uh, like hominids working together or whatever or monkey. I don't even know. I don't know. I'm don't not know sure what, what to call them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I do like, though, the idea that it's kind of going through a long progression of human history to kind of, like, check in with how are, how are humans doing, how are early primates doing in their evolution. And how often they can almost be murdered. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. It looks pretty cool. Like, he, he's been working on it for a long time. So yeah. I'm hoping that it's, I mean, it's coming out in 2019, um, and I'm hoping that it, it's, it's going to be good. off all the Christians. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have any strong feelings about this one way or the other? I think it looks neat. That's about all I could say, really. Yeah. Like until I really get a nitty gritty, is exactly what you're doing. I'm, it just looks like a nice project so far. You know, it kind of reminds me of like Snake Eater, like in that you have to like you're in like a kind of an open, uh, um, like jungle environment, swinging through trees and stuff, and then like. I don't know. I don't it's know which of, version of Snake Eater you're playing where you're swinging through trees that often. You can climb <laughs> trees and then yeah, jump to other trees and stuff. I guess, but like not like a fucking 
No, I, monkey. No, I mean, no, but that's what comes to mind when I think about being out in a okay, world so and having to survive okay. in the wild. I guess right? that makes more sense. <laughs> I'm not saying it is Snake Eater. I'm saying it reminds me of Snake Eater. I was just, it's funny because when you were saying that, I was picturing Snake like doing all these like weird monkey swings off of shit. I'd play that game. I would play that game. I would do. I would play that game. 100%. Um, from there, uh, uh, this was a weird one. We got one called Scavengers uh, that was kind of interesting at first. It was like a bunch of people on a space station, but they've all got like bows and armor and weird, like they look like kind of futuristic raiders. Yeah. And they'll come down to these drop ships to like check out like a big crashed thing. It's like a meteor or something? Yeah. And I don't, again, this is another one of those where I'm like, I was really interested in what was going on with it, but then at the end it seemed like it was just going to be like a four-player PvE like man versus or trying to like I don't like the division right like uh, yeah. you and your team trying to like kill things to get loot um even then I'm not really sure what it is cuz I just remember yeah there was like a, an interview with the, one of the devs right after yeah where they're just like we're excited cuz we're new and you know you can sign up to play I guess it's like I don't know what the fuck any of this means <laughs> yeah it was just it's a little it's a little odd um it's a little odd. I don't know. I get real leery these days about small companies doing like four person multiplayer games because I feel like they all have a shelf life of about a month and then everybody forgets about them because something big comes out. Yeah, remember that one for what was it? This I want to say it was a Switch game. You know which one I'm talking about? The Treasure Hunter kind of one, four player. Is it Raiders of a Broken Planet? I, I don't even know. That's the thing is I don't remember the name of it. PS, that was a PS4 one. But yeah, I don't know. This one, I mean, like, you know, it looks somewhat interesting, but. The, the then the idea i don't know i guess these days there's just so many it throws up a lot of warning signs to me like yeah. th this whole end part like i like the space station thing but then the way that the characters all have like bows and arrows and like weird shoulder pauldrons and whatever makes me think that it's some kind of crafting survival game and the fact that there's a bunch of them marching towards a thing makes me think that it's some kind of like work with your friends like i'm getting kind of weird metal gear survive vibes oh, off of it a little bit yeah. um well, multiplayer. You got Metal Gear on the brain today, don't you? No, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, well, look, when I see something where there's like all this technological advancement, but then the person has a bow and an arrow, oh, and I'm okay. like, what, how are you on a space station, but you've got a bow and an arrow? Like, what the fuck is that? Fuck off. Also, how like, did they get up there? <laughs> exactly. That's like what I'm saying. They just randomly took like escape pods or something. Yeah. How do you expect to get back up there? Yeah. And not only that, but in this cutscene, they all seem to crash their escape pods on the way down. So, w what? Why? Just, I don't know. It's, it's the strangest thing about this trailer. Like, I, I look at this, and what I see is, like, yes, you have to go do this raid with your friends in order to craft better shoulder gear so that you could basically do the next thing up the list. And I'm just like, eh. Yeah, I'm not too interested. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, oh. Oh, well, the description on this, at least this is all game trailers, is the f the first game from New Studio Midwinter is a cooperative and competitive survival shooter in the frigid wastes. Eh. So... Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure for somebody, not for me. I'm sure someone will like it. Um, again, <laughs> I don't want to just repeat myself over and over again, but <laughs> Dead by Daylight had a trailer for a new thing called Darkness Among Us. Uh, this is actually a really good looking trailer. Uh, this is basically just announcing a new, like, map and a new, uh, a new killer. Uh, the killer, to me, seems like a kind of a weird cross between, like, Slenderman and Jeff the Killer. It's got, like, a, a white mask with a big grin written on it yeah, uh, or the kind of drawn across it. Um, I don't know. All of the, all of the dead by daylight murderers kind of have their own theme. And I feel like having just played it with Tony for Halloween that I didn't see one that was like internet creepypasta murderer. And the fact that the last time that I went to a spirit Halloween store, they had a Jeff, the killer oh. costume. Oh, that's <laughs> like, interesting. You could just buy off the rack. Like makes me think that that's what we're looking at is, like cross between those two, so that it's uh, uh, you know, not copyright infringing on anything. But I do enjoy that they keep making more stuff for it, though. Yeah, I'm glad. I mean, the guy, the dev was there, and he said that they were what looking to keep it going for like five years. They've got like a five year oh, plan wow. to keep Dead by Daylight coming out with new new stuff. So Good for them. yeah. Um. All right, let's. Let's hunker down a little bit. Let's let's shift mm. into a slightly lower gear and slow down a little bit because our next trailer was the Far Cry New Dawn reveal trailer. Um, 
So listen, y'all, before we start with this, I'm just going to put this down right now. There's not really very many ways to talk about this without having some spoilers for Fallout for Far Cry 5. Like even by just describing it without any real detail, I feel like you're going to be getting spoilers for Far Cry 5. So if you have an interest in playing all the way to the end of Far Cry 5, I'm going to say maybe skip ahead 3 to 5 minutes here. So everybody gone? Here you guys all skip ahead. It's your last chance. Okay. Uh, so this looks like it's the f- kind of Far Cry primal of Far Cry 5, where it's the Far Cry 5 map, but it's after the big apocalypse ending for Far Cry 5. Yeah, which I fucking, I hated that ending. Me too. A lot. Yeah. Thought it was real stupid. Because, because it made that motherfucker right, and for the dumbest reason, and that he just didn't tell anybody that he was right, or he just decided I, to kidnap people, put them on drugs, and put them in fallout shelters because because he had a vision from the Lord. His like, plan didn't make a lot of sense either way. It was really It was, was a lot of just like, because the, the problem stupid. I have with it is the game's just being like, it's he was right, and you're the bad guy. And it's like, but that doesn't make any sense based on literally everything he did. <laughs> yes, yes. Please don't tell me that the guy that's kidnapping and drugging people is the bad guy. In any case, uh, this looks like it's after the the bombs, except that there's still a lot of like uh, bright, colorful vegetation going on. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how long apparently this takes place or something. Uh, Well, not too long, apparently, because at the very end, there's a tease that... Fucking Joseph Seed is still alive, so... Yeah, and he's dis- very disappointed by his vision. Yep, and in fact, the uh, the an- main antagonists say that they were children when the bombs dropped, so 10 to 15 to maybe 20 years. Probably, yeah. Um, also, the antagonist is a pair of uh, uh, black ladies. A couple, uh, tw- couple twins who are just like murder and power and such. That's, uh, you know, the theme for most post-apocalyptic. What do they say? We're either going to take it or we're going to break it. Which is such a weird (laughs) fucking thing to say (laughs) about anything. Um, So, uh, yeah, like, I don't really understand because before we get to the these two in this trailer, I feel like it's literally showing us like children playing and and bright grass is green everywhere. Like this this was like farmland and there was like i mean like it obviously hasn't been hit super hard by the apocalypse considering stuff is still growing so i don't understand what are we fighting over is it like there's wide open spaces it's not like there's only certain places where the world isn't irradiated or at least from what we can see in this trailer it seems that there's enough space for people so i don't understand why we're thunderdoming up in here it's because people are batshit insane according to joseph seed's little thing yeah that's all it is so this the most exciting thing about this game is they just they realize that dogs can jump in the cars (laughs) yes thank you finally i mean like you know there's some stuff that looks like somewhat broken down but i don't know i mean i guess i'm far cry 5 really put a bad taste in my mouth and i'm 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 not i don't want to give up on the far cry franchise but like here's the thing Far Cry Primal was not a prequel to Far Cry 4, right? Yeah. Like, I think it used the same map as Far Cry 4, like a modified version of that I map. I think so. But Primal was its own thing, and I didn't yeah. really super care for it. Like, it wasn't exactly my favorite of the franchise, but it was at least its own thing, whereas I found Far Cry 5 to be one of the most disappointing entries in the franchise, and then to build on top of that it's like yeah uh, like I, I thought that game was fun and the aspects of how the was played but story-wise i just thought it was god awful yeah i don't know i mean like i i had some problems with the fact that they took away the the radar like i went back to far cry 4 i, I think far cry 4 is an amazing game because oh, yeah. i think pagan man is a way better bad guy than joseph seed i think the whole like brother and sister which missions will you do who do you put your faith in you know kind of moral quandary yeah and those endings had like a lot of oomph to them because each one had their own like yeah this is kind of fucked up thing going on with them yeah and but it was like a realistic this is kind of fucked up kind of thing yeah whereas with far cry 5 it's just like uh nukes or you murdered everyone you knew i guess yes okay sure (laughs) well also you know what they don't entirely explain is um like, if you do the quote-unquote good ending and leave him, like, 
Like, let's not let's not, let's technically just say here that right about the time that your character starts murdering all of your friends, the nuke should still be dropping. Yeah, they should still go out. Right? Like, like why are they? exploding to begin with it's not like they involve joseph seed in any actual way i i don't i don't know it's I, the that's the weirdest that's the dumbest part to it's, me it, it, it's it it's so arbitrary and so comes out of nowhere and then like it just doesn't make any a whole hell of a lot of sense so also like they're nuking like the middle of like what the midwest for some reason yeah they're <laughs> of all the, places like the middle of montana for it's no like, reason what okay and like why did the middle of montana have all these missile silos anyway and wh- what why why and multiple multiples of them within like a 10 mile radius i, 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 so I want to get i don't want to keep complaining about far cry 5 anyway I, in this you know who knows this could be good i just wasn't as big a fan of far cry 5 mechanically or story or anything and it seems like they're just taking all of that and making yeah. another game based on it so uh you you know you just run the risk right of like if i didn't like far cry 5 probably not gonna like this one either yeah uh, or or not even not like it but it goes back to what we were talking about of like there are so many exceptional things that i could be playing do i want to play a mediocre far cry game basically yeah uh, i don't know are you, you guys blood dragon is what we're saying yes they they man they do not want to do that. I don't understand why they don't want to do that, but they, they do not weird. want to do that. Um, I don't know all the all the DLC for Far Cry Five as well kind of fell over on its face. I didn't really enjoy. It much I forgot of that there stuff. even was DLC. Is the Vietnam one, the Mars yeah, one, and that's yeah. right. Um, so anyway, and then I'm sure the internet's going to be unhappy with this because of you know I don't reasons. know reasons. I don't know. <laughs> ladies are the bad guys, or ladies aren't the bad. I don't know. Whatever. In any case, it's weird how kind of like I didn't realize how far fa- Far Cry had fallen in my list of things that I would like to play until this came up and I was like, oh, yeah, no. Basically, I- 5 has the same thing that happened to me with Assassin's Creed 3. Yeah. But once I was done with it, I was like, I never want to play any of this kind of game again. Like ah. Because the story was ending was so just like, I don't care about any of this now i guess i'm not saying it's irredeemable it's just that like uh, ubisoft needs to well, i'm not saying either one of those is irredeemable it's just it left such a bad taste in my mouth i was yeah. just like i just don't want to do this anymore i forgot i mean i even forgot that far cry 5 came out this year i did too actually <laughs> so yeah, you just I, said that yeah <laughs> i thought that was last year <laughs> i i'm pretty sure it's not here let me just make sure that i'm not but i'm i'm pretty sure that far cry 5 was uh because yeah, we played it yeah and I didn't start doing this until this year. March 27th fuck. Yep, of this year. Not even like January, March. God damn. So, anyway, but if you're interested in that, uh, then uh, next February, you got it. It's so weird because I, as I close that, look at what, what's coming up next, then I realize that like 2018 has been a really good year in some respects with things like God of War and Spider-Man and Red Dead and yeah. Oberdan. And, you know, there's even other stuff that I'm not mentioning that came earlier on. The fact that Divinity is now on consoles, that's a great thing. So many good things. But also, I feel like a lot of the old monolithic game franchises and companies are kind of starting to, like, crumble a little bit. Like, we're going to talk about uh, Fallout or oh, Bethesda yeah. a little bit later. But, like, the next thing was, you know... The Bioware's out there flogging Anthem. Yeah. And, you know, this is the Anthem story trailer. And while I will admit that this is slightly more interesting than just the, look, it's got rocket suits in it trailer. Like, there's an actual antagonist. Now, apparently the Anthem is the is the actual bad guy thing. No, I think, I mean, it's... Well, no, because they said, like, the Anthem or whatever is attacking or some shit. No. The, the power uh, of the Anthem, uh, something like that. Yeah, the power of the Anthem can blow stuff up, but then we've got this this shadowy dude at the end that is like, oh, the Anthem will be fucking, I will use that to destroy all of mankind, blah, 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 blah. Uh, like some, yeah, with a psycho crusher. Yeah, some kind of weird, like, an actual bad guy, because up until this point... It's just been like, oh, it's just monsters, right? Yeah. It's just a bunch of monsters, and you've got to blow up all the monsters. Uh, whereas now, I mean, like, you know. But then again, who is this guy? What's he doing? What's the anthem? He they looks keep- like a Metal Gear uh, Rising villain. He reminds me of, his helmet reminds me of something, but I don't know what. I don't know. Again, I'm going to say the same thing that I've said a bunch of times about Anthem, which is there is no reason that Destiny with Iron Man suits can't be a fun game, but... EA has made it's this way is this this is EA right yeah Bioware yeah. is owned by EA um, EA has made me very leery like Battlefield Battlefront like 
EA has got me really like looking sideways of just like oh, yeah. I don't really know that I'm into EA games as much as anymore. Uh, and like you know, Mass Effect, like uh, I don't yeah, after know. After Andromeda, it's like guys, uh, you guys kind of fucked us on this one. Well, I mean, like the thing is that you know, Bioware can have a, a bad game, but that this one better be fucking good. Yeah, and I don't know if what I'm saying, seeing, I don't know if I'm just tainted by my experience with Andromeda to the point where I'm just kind of giving this a side eye. I'd like for this game to be good. I want it to be good. And I want to give it a chance, but they haven't really cobbled together anything so far that makes it seem more interesting. You know what? It's like when we were talking about the the guys coming down from the space station, uh-huh. where it's like the moment that they showed us the floor demo for Anthem, and it was like, hey, you and your friends can go out and do four-player missions for loot. And it's like, oh, so it's it's Destiny. Yeah. It's And it's like, well, again... Like, well, no, it's not. It's got Iron Man suit, so it's Destiny with Iron Man suit. It's Destiny with <laughs> Iron Man suit. So, th- I mean, there's no reason why Destiny with Iron Man suits can't be a good game. Yeah. However, the all of the evidence so far is that it's probably going to be boring. It's probably not going to be fun if you're playing by yourself, which I totally am going to be doing. Yeah. Like, so, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I want, I want to be excited, but I just can't. I don't know why, but I just don't, don't really give a shit. Yeah, I don't know. It just, it's just they haven't put together... They haven't. They just haven't put together a trailer or a compelling reason that makes it seem like it's super, super interesting. But I don't know. I guess we'll see. It's in what February? So when it's coming out? I think so. A lot uh, of stuff coming out in the next year. Yeah, sometime in twenty nineteen. Um, from there, something that Michael is really, really. Oh my god! Would you, you would you like to talk about how this? About this uh, uh, he is the most excited I've ever seen a human being about a fucking kart racing game. So Crash Team Racing was the last of the Naughty Dog games that uh, Crash they made f- for Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, and it's actually I it's actually my, one of my favorite kart games. I actually enjoy it more than most of the Mario Kart games. Um, it's very fun. It has a lot of different carts. It has a actual story mode single player that unlike most kart racers okay i'm sure it's a very generic one uh, an alien comes down says hey uh i'm gonna turn the world the earth into a parking lot unless one of your best racers can defeat me in a race and so what it is is that you have to you race through a series of different worlds to, to eventually race nitrous oxide but there's a lot of cool like a little fun with it there's a lot of shortcuts within it it's very accessible and it's just an all-around great fucking cart game okay and, uh, having a re-release of it is super exciting and i'm just so goddamn excited <laughs> so there you go somebody is excited yes very uh, excited i mean yeah I, I still have my copy of the original one i feel like the original the 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 crash collection or whatever did so well that i mean of course that this would yeah, be was a no-brainer can we just you know i guess this is just my can we I only care about one of these franchises. Can we remaster Jack and Daxter the same way as all the rest of this shit? Or maybe Sly Cooper, because I feel like they've done all of them except for those, and I really want those, because I like I like uh, Jack. I never finished Jack 2, oh, okay. and I want to go back and finish Jack 2. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, let's see from there. Ah, here we go. Here's one that I am super, 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 super excited about. Um, we saw... The latest Obsidian game, uh, The Outer Worlds. And, okay, so for a long time, Obsidian has just been making, like, top-down Baldur's Gate-style games. They made the uh, Pillars of Eternity and then Tyranny, which was a more like Neverwinter Nights or, like, 3D models top-down. Uh, but here is an actual full-on Honest to God. It looks like first person. It looks like Fallout. Yeah. It looks like weird, sp- old-timey space Fallout. It looks incredible. Like It looks like so much goddamn fun. I really want to play this. It looks like Obsidian has gone, okay, Bethesda, you done fucked it up twice. Why don't we just go ahead and we'll do it? Just, you know, you guys sit down. We'll do our own. We'll make our own Fallout game in space. How do you, what do you think about that? Um, it's so, the, the world they've built within the small trailer is already so much more interesting than anything I've seen from Fallout 4 or... 76. 76. Yeah, I agree. Like, I like this kind of weird, rustic, but futuristic, like people wearing bandanas, but also cyber things and armor. And the fact also, it's really interesting to me that it's a first person. Um, or at least the trailer seems to be a first person. I think that this, 
is this could be gameplay? It looks like this could be gameplay. Um, I'm but, not sh- 100% certain on some of it. Some of it looks like gameplay. I think a lot of it looks like the engine that they're that using. one specific but... part where he shoots that that guy, though. <laughs> I fucking love that part so goddamn much. You have to decide between like, the two people. You didn't have to shoot either one of them. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it looks just delightful. I also it, love how horrified the person you basically, <laughs> like, didn't shoot is. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it is a truly delightful looking trailer it looks like a game that is i don't know i mean it just looks really really fun like i don't know this is one where like so that first that first space game looked like a pre-rendered cutscene and not a trailer yeah. like, like in game engine um this is like an in-game engine you know it looks like a first it looks like a single player rpg obsidian has been doing nothing but sharpening their fucking rpg knives over the last like four or five years uh, the only thing I wonder is I don't I didn't look up whether this is w- going to be an exclusive because you know they just got bought by Microsoft. So oh, that's right. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a Windows 10 Xbox One exclusive, but I do know that whatever it is, I I want to play it like this. Oh, oh no, yeah, PS4, Xbox One, and Steam. Okay, so it's probably the last thing they're going to be making before they start making whatever they got from Microsoft. But yeah, I this this just looks incredibly good to me, um, and I think that it would be. I think it would be such a coup if Obsidian, if if Bethesda has managed to fuck up the Fallout franchise <laughs> to the point where nobody cares about it, and Obsidian, the company they literally fired because New Vegas's Metacritic score wasn't high enough for them, um, out Fallout's them with this space game and creates a brand new franchise that is that goes off into eternity. It's like. super ballsy it's just the fact that they went, hey, we're the original creators of Fallout and also we made that one you all fucking love. Yeah. Kind of thing. They're just like, yeah, they're like, they're just straight up looking at them. They try not to break it as well. Like, they're just looking right at fucking Bethesda going, yeah, we're fucking coming <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This one is super, super, super exciting to me because this one checks all the boxes. Looks like it's got a story. Looks like it's got a good gameplay engine. Set in space. Got an old-timey Western feel in space. It's got a nice world. Bam. Checks Great. That, checks that box right away. Boom, boom, boom. Sense of humor that seems like it knows where it's going. Yep. Everything I see is a big old thumbs up. So this is one that I am really, really interested in. Go check it out. Outer Worlds. Uh, from there, we got The Last Campfire. Uh, which is, <laughs> when we were watching this, <laughs> I was quizzing Michael about a bunch of games that were announced, and I was saying, do you remember the name of any of these games? Um, and I was like, you'll probably forget the name of this one, too. And then sure enough, before we started, I was yeah, like... Yeah, I literally <laughs> forgot it. You were like, you remember the last campfire? I'm like, I don't remember any of that. What? The what? <laughs> yeah. This is the next game from Hello Games, the makers of No Man's Sky, and it's got a little... Little Jawa, little cute Jawas and little cute boats, f- driving around, exploring worlds, doing stuff, solving puzzles. Um, I mean, you know, again, this is one of those ones where it's like, I don't know, it looks looks okay. I, it looks like it could be cute. I don't know. I didn't finish Hob or what was that one with the weird little monster with the glowing eyes I, that I forgot the name I of. Don't even like, the name, I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> Normally yeah. I do. And I'm just like, I have no idea what the fuck that is. <sighs> it was like a weird, you're talking to the other animals. You're like chirping at other animals. Everything has a real dark palette to it. I don't know. Anyway. Um, no idea. Yeah, I think we played it for a Patreon video a long time ago. Not you and I, but somebody. But anyway, this is the last campfire. I don't know. Uh, anything in here jumping out at you make you feel? It's nice looking. Yeah. It's kind of adorable. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's got a nice art style to it. I don't want to like, I don't want to to uh you know pretend like these guys haven't done work on this it's just cutesy thing in small raft exploring the world fire eh. fires i guess I don't know. Eh. Eh. uh tell you what else is eh. <laughs> that's PUBG. uh pub has got a new map a new snow map uh vikendi that is uh already out on the pc beta server and it's going to be coming to the playstation 4 and the xbox one uh, this is a it's what six on six did they say? Yeah, snow, snowy map. Um, it kind of has a little, a little trailer where a bird pulls a pin out of a grenade, and it's that's that's kind of it. Um, like, yeah, we can be kind of cutesy. It's like you guys aren't Fortnite. Just 
Stop it. <laughs> well, they gotta they gotta try something. I mean, you know, the last trailer that I saw from PUBG was the Joker and Harley Quinn Suicide Squad uh, oh, yeah. costumes that was like one of the cringiest trailers I've ever seen in my life. Pretty ridiculous. Uh, they're trying they're trying something. I'll give them that, but you know, it's not really trying all that much though. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's already on the PC test servers, PS4 and Xbox One uh, servers in January. Uh, let's see, from there, this is kind of a surprise, um, is the Ark Survival Evolved folks have a new game that's coming out uh, called Atlas. And this is like pirates, but then also a lot of weird magical... So like hydras and yeah. giants and... Cyclopses and dragons. Sea monsters and shit. It's yeah. Like, it's like every possible thing they could think of they threw into a single game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, there seems to be a lot of it that's based on... I mean, they kind of seem to be like... It wouldn't surprise me if their thought process was that they played No Man's Sky and went, oh, shit, we could do this way better. Um, have a really big open world game with a lot of ships and then, you know, going out and fighting magical creatures. I don't know. I mean, like, it kind of looks cool. I'm it looks really interesting. Like, it's... It's it's more like somebody looked at Sea of Thieves and went, like, what if we added things to this game? <laughs> <laughs> what if there's an actual game here? But like everything that we possibly could think of thrown into one. Yeah. And it actually looks kind of exciting because of that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh I've never really I never really played Ark, but I didn't either, but I this kind of makes me want to play this. It's an it's an open world survival game and it's gonna be out I mean before the year is out. Next Thursday. The, the next Thursday, yeah, on the thirteenth. Yeah. So I don't know. Kind of. I mean, this one is like, hey, at least you're trying something different. Yeah, least, absolutely. Because up until now, it's like they put out Ark, and then they've just been putting out weird expansions for Ark, and yeah. then like, oh, here's the the multiplayer ver, or here's the battle royale version of Ark, or here's the VR version of Ark, and yeah. here's like this other version of Ark, and it's just like, okay, sure, guys, yeah. Uh, let's see. From there, uh, let's let's talk about Crackdown. Let's talk about Crackdown 3. Can we not? Uh, <laughs> I don't. Just Crackdown just doesn't excite me. It, I don't understand this trailer. It excited me the first time when, you know, when Crackdown was first announced, when the Xbox One was kind of announced. Yep. And then it never came out. <laughs> I do not understand this trailer. Uh, it's like Terry Crews comes out. In a in a tuxedo, and he's looking good. And then there's another Terry Crews in armor on the couch, who's telling him he needs to have a tighter suit. And so he changes into a slightly tighter suit. And he changes into a skin tight bodysuit. And he keeps saying tighter, tighter. And then he leaves. And then he comes back with the armor suit that the, that the hallucination of him on the couch is wearing, which doesn't actually seem like it's that much tighter than the skin tight tuxedo suit that he was wearing. He like, just thinks it's cooler. I, uh, what's it doesn't work as a joke. Like because he's literally making it tighter instead of figuratively making it tighter. And then like if his self was dressed in that armor and he had that armor, why did he Is I don't understand the joke. To be himself? Is it like cause as far as I know, Terry Crews isn't even the actual character in the game. So Yeah. It makes it even twice as confusing. Yeah. And in fact, the fact that in the beginning, like he comes out dressed in his tuxedo and looks in the mirror, like if this had all been happening with his reflection in the mirror telling him to be tighter, that would have been one thing. And then like when he comes back in the armor, then like the reflection pulls out a gun. It doesn't it's work a, for me on a joke level, it's right? It's a really like, bad trailer. <laughs> it it doesn't work in any way, in my opinion. Like, like it's just like, like you said, hey Terry Crews, you like that guy, right? Uh, and then you know they show the game for twelve seconds, and it's just the Terry Crews in the game with a with a completely locked facial expression and a gun. Like I, I don't even know if that's him or not. Like I, I remember them saying he wasn't the character in it, but he was in the commercials. I don't know. No, I think he's. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's him. I don't even know anymore because I never have once seen the character say anything. So. Well, there was one of the E3 trailers that had him in the... And how long ago game. was that? <laughs> uh, two years? But, yeah. Like, the, the, the Crackdown 3, I was excited at first, but it's been so long, I just don't care anymore. I don't even think that Terry Crews... I mean, I think that if you say that Terry Crews is going to be in your game and then you take Terry Crews out of your game, that... I mean, I, I'm not saying that couldn't happen, but I'm saying that would be a real dumb thing to do. Well, technically, Mike Coulter is in Halo 5, but he's not in Halo 5 at the same time, which I think is kind of funny. Maybe it's like that. I don't even know who that is. He's the guy who plays Luke Cage. Oh. He's uh, he's one of the Spartans in Halo 5, but because he had the dude Luke Cage, they had to use a different voice actor. 
for okay. five. So it's like his face, but a different voice actor? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I should have moved this one closer to Anthem. But hey, also, yes, we had a trailer <laughs> for the uh, Dread Wolf Rises, which is going to be some kind of Dragon Age thing, I think. Yeah, uh, apparently. And it's it. Uh, I don't really understand what this trailer is. It's another just kind of like, I don't know, just saying a bunch of cryptic stuff and showing like I don't I don't know what this thing is that they keep flashing around if this is like a petrified dragon or what I don't even know what the dread wolf is I mean I played uh, Dragon Age Inquisition but it's been a long time I never played either of them so maybe it was in maybe the first one or something. I don't know either um, all I know is that Dragon Age 2 Dragon Age 1 was too hard for me Dragon Age 2 was garbage Dragon Age 3 was okay, and everybody treated it like it was Game of the Year, even though it was okay. Uh, yeah, so. I don't. I forgot it even existed. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's funny how here we are years later, and like all of my favorite game franchises are like in the ground. I'm like, oh, Metal Gear? Oh, you yeah. buried that shit. Like, Dragon Age? Uh, Mass Effect? Nah, Castlevania. They're making a phone game. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Okay, sure. Castlevania's <laughs> dead to me. Fallout's kind of dead to me. Like, man, they are. They're really going after it these days. Mega Man wasn't too bad. Mega Man Eleven was great. I thought, yeah. but I mean, you know, you could make it the case. Very good music. Other than that, it was good. Uh, about like you know Diablo on phone. I mean, like, whew, a lot of a lot of sacred cows are just. They're really fucking it all up. They're really Although they're, all up. they're bringing back from the dead some of my favorites, so that's kind of neat. Yeah. Ultimate Lions, Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. That's kind of neat. Spyro. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I don't know. I don't really care about Dragon <laughs> Age. Uh, from there, uh, we saw The Pathless, which is, uh, what is this? The, the it's a new game from um, the makers of, what was it? Oh, Abzu. Abzu. Yeah. So was that water thing? Yeah, that was like a, a just kind of, it's kind of like Journey, but underwater. You're yeah. just kind of going between different places and doing stuff. I didn't really care for it, but that was just me. A lot of people got mad at me for not caring about it because they were like, bro, you just got to slow down and fucking enjoy it. That's a gorgeous dolphins. game, though. Uh, yeah, but you don't do anything. Like, that's the No Man's Sky problem, right? Is that like, it's it, you have to have compelling things to do or else... Yeah. You, anyway, you remember flowers? There's just flowers in the wind. Uh, I did, yeah. and I remember that you did something in flower. Is that when you were in flower, you would pick up the petals, and then you would go to the unflowered flowers, and you make flowers bloom everywhere. So there was something to do instead of just floating along. Um, nah, I felt like that's all you were doing. <laughs> did you ever get to the end of flower where you have no, to literally? I got bored. Outrun the city. <laughs> it was like four hours long. <laughs> yeah, I got bored, and like not even an hour in. I was like, yeah, I'm good. Anyway, this has got a lady ninja with a bow and a a, a bird, and there's like the big titans running around. Reminds me a lot of Princess Mononoke. I can um, see that. Yeah, this looks cool. I like this. There's a character with a weapon and a bird friend. <laughs> Something will probably happen in this game. There's a, 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 a like a star moose, and then like a giant magma uh, like dragon. So it looks interesting. Yeah, I'm interested to see what this one does. This one doesn't check all the boxes, but hey, it's got style. I've seen what the gameplay sort of looks like, or at least a little bit of it. Um, I don't know. This one does better for me than a lot of the other ones. Also because it just implies that there's going to be some action adventure. <laughs> <laughs> um, next we have Survived By from Human Head. Uh, this I think this is a fun trailer, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, this reminds me a lot of um, Rogue Legacy. Uh, because you die, and then your offspring picks yeah. up. You go to the next generation, uh, gets stronger, or whatever. Um, and it's like a top down. Looks like kind of like a rogue roguelite, something like that. Um, well, I don't know if it's completely roguelike or not, but it is like a very much a free. It's a free multiplayer game, right? If I, uh, I don't think it. I don't I know think if that's what it said at the end. Is it free? I don't know if it's free. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. it was like a free MMO thing, but it was like you can play it by yourself if you want to, although, like, you will probably die is what the game tells you. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of the point, again, where, I don't know. 
where it was like, oh, you can play it by yourself, but it'll probably suck. And it's like, okay, bye. At least uh, they're upfront about it, though. Yeah. A lot yeah. of other places are, would like to will pretend that it's probably a great time by yourself. Yeah. I don't know. It kind of reminds me of something like, I mean, I know it's not the same thing, but like, remember when uh, there were games that were like, like Maple Story or whatever, where there was like, oh, yeah. The top, the top down MMO where it was just a, like your screen was full of a bunch of uh, just, you know, random names. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of that. I don't know. I do love the I do love the cleverness of the title though. Oh, of survived by survived yeah. by. Yeah. I think it's a great idea, a great name for a game. Uh let's see. Stranger Things is gonna have another game. Uh as Michael pointed out, he wasn't even aware that there were other Stranger Things games. I had no idea. Pretty sure that these are all phone games. This third one, I don't really understand, but then I never watched Stranger Things season two. I don't have a lot to say about this outside of that's the thing. Yeah, I don't even know what the fuck's happening. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna go ahead and and kind of skip over this one. Uh, but what I will definitely not be skipping over though, neither to talk about nor when it comes out, is the new Nether Realm Studios. Oh, it already got leaked. We already knew that it was gonna be happening. But it doesn't matter because it's still exciting. It doesn't matter if your rap track is kind of bad. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11. Well, uh, Boone's been teasing this shit forever. So yeah. Well, there was a. He's been teasing it, but then I feel like what was it? Two or three weeks ago, there was a thing where like a Spanish voice actor got on Twitter and was like, "Oh, I see Nether Realm. You're not gonna let me voice Kung Lao in, in Mortal Kombat 11? <laughs> well, fuck you then!" <laughs> and everyone was just like, "Uh," and they're like, "What did you say?" <laughs> and he was like, "I mean," and then he came back and he was like, "I mean, if there even is a Mortal Kombat 11, I don't know something." <laughs> and it was like, "Yeah, all right." Yeah, he was definitely not getting hired back after that. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, you know what? All the shit I've been talking about, like cinematic trailers, is a totally cinematic trailer fucking evil raiden and scorpion are having a fight there's fucking buckets of blood in this thing yeah it just seems to be like a series of x-ray moves over yep. and over again to uh, the point where we're like how are you still alive <laughs> you know they're all gods and shit like i mean you know technically any if any x-ray move lands in an immortal Kombat game they should be dead i think one of my favorites is uh what is it uh johnny cage's daughters uh -huh. x-ray move where she just makes a guy's balls explode <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh I mean, I like in this one where Scorpion throws two of the little chains and they both go into his eyes and he pulls them back down again. And then I don't, i have it's been a long time since I played Mortal Kombat 10, but like Raiden executes one Scorpion and then another Scorpion like dressed like old Mortal Kombat comes out uh, and then fucking like flies through him yeah. and torches his midsection and then like rips maybe, his head off maybe or cuts it's time off. travel i don't know yeah i don't time know travel all up in this bitch all i know is that this is incredible another round has made three super good four super good games between mortal kombat and injustice and uh i'm a big fan i'm, I'm pretty excited I, I can't wait um they are my favorite fighting game they are really the only developer of fighting games that I really like a lot. Because they also have probably one of the most solid timelines in all of fighting game. Yep. It's one of the reasons I like them is because there's plenty of single player goodness to be had in their games. Their Earth's Mightiest Warrior right now is Johnny Cage and I can't get over how great that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Well, fuck Luke Cage. Luke Cage sucks. He's just a, <laughs> just a Bruce Lee ripoff, man. He is, yeah. <laughs> like, at least Johnny Cage may be an asshole, but at least I, like, you know. Well, he's a John claude Van Damme thing. Yeah, yeah. What was that? Nope, nope, uh, nope. <laughs> Whatever it was, it's gone now. Uh, from there, we got a uh, first Honest God trailer for Psychonauts 2. Uh, now, I don't think either one of us have played Psychonauts 1. Yeah, Psychonauts 1 was an Xbox exclusive when it first came out. Was it? And then I just forgot its existence, so that's one of the reasons I never played it. It was also one of the reasons it didn't do too well originally. Like OG Xbox? Yeah, like OG, OG Xbox. Okay. And it was a huge fucking deal at the time, and then I just had no way of playing it. And, and by the time it started coming out on other stuff. Yeah, I just didn't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This trailer looks pretty cool. Like, uh, Raz and all of his weirdo Muppet-looking friends hanging around Psychonauts HQ. Yeah, it was always told it was a very charming story and everything, and I always considered playing it, but I just never did. I think the weirdest thing for me is it seems like every time I look at um, Psychonauts, it's always like, it looks like it's just a jumping platformer. Uh, and there was like a very brief moment in here where there was like 
Raz was like shooting somebody or something, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, I like that. Yeah, like, this, yeah, this this game, this series has always been a huge cult classic, and people have always wanted a sequel to it. And yeah, you know, they they it got announced a, a couple of E3s back, and yeah, it was a, forgot after a while. Well, what was weird to me was I actually was keeping up with some of the dev diary stuff for this for a while, but then I just kind of I was like, there's only so many times you can watch them play a prototype of a level, but yeah. it all seemed really charming. Um, I guess it just is going to depend on what it's like when it comes out. But hey, you know what? Uh, Double Fine is a pretty good track record. So, Absolutely. And if they were going to spend their time and make sure that one game was really, really good, I feel like it would be uh, you know, the game that people have been asking for for, what, 10 years? It's been quite a while. A decade plus. It's a huge cult classic. Yeah. Uh, we got a Dummy Cry 5 trailer. Uh, anything new in this trailer that, that you found interesting? Um, well, the fact that the, the, they showed more of that, that this specific character, I don't know his name. Is that um, Virgil's son or something? I'm not really sure. Okay. The, just yet, at least personally. I mean, his hair turns um, white, so he's obviously related to either Dante or Virgil, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> like, And then, you know, we got Nero being Nero and Dante being Dante and... I'm just, it's just, I'm still really excited about this game. Like, even with all the microtransaction XP booster stuff. Well, I don't know. It depends on what ha- how extreme that is, really. Yeah, is is really what it comes down to a lot of the times. But Devil May Cry has never really been known for being easy. Yeah. So, like, even if it's like, oh, you need these, it makes it easier to beat. I'm like, have you played Devil May Cry three? I don't need easier to beat right now. <laughs> uh, you know what? I I would like to take the take a moment to uh put in a brief. Uh, vote for I could use slightly easier <laughs> to beat. Like so I always feel like if you want to tune the game so that normal is like what normal is across the spectrum, and then like you know hard, extreme, fuck your mother, <laughs> like you know uh, uh, yeah whatever. Well, YouTube one of those comment section. That, like, my pension, like my ability to deal with crazy nonsense is is a lot higher because of you know uh, like to be prepared for that sort of thing in this series is is purely because of the Mario Kart three. Because because fucking whoever it was decided on some bullshit, decided to make fucking normal hard and easy normal. Yeah, he fucked up. Like, because apparently in Japan, that's how it's uh, that's how it is actually. <laughs> yeah, in Japan, easy then, is normal and hard. Yeah, normal is hard. So yeah, well, no, here in America, that's what had happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hard, normal normal was hard mode. Yeah, and stuff, and then they they fixed it with um the special edition. I don't know. I played all the way through that game i i i came across a lot of stuff last week because i finished darksiders 3 and i came across uh-huh. a lot of people who were just like oh it was hard for me i played it on fucking apocalypse and i'm just like super super good at video games and it's like <laughs> well yeah but it was hard for me ass face like i'm not willing to spend and like when devil may cry 3 came out i was enough of a fan of the franchise that i was willing to sit there and bash my head up against that game until i finally got it but these days no, I'm That's not perfectly w- fair. Not willing to bash my head up against. And like game. you said, there's way too many good games to be willing to do that nowadays. Dante's old, and so am I. <laughs> and if I if I start getting too frustrated, I'm putting that shit on easy. I'm done. I'm done suffering through games that where devs think that hard equals good because it's it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't. And then another Souls games come with that. <laughs> you know, but I guess here's the thing: is that like, you know, there's no reason that. You can't make the normal like I feel like the people that want a really hard game are gonna start the game and then put the difficulty level all the way up to the oh, top. No, absolutely. I was talking to a friend at work, he got Spider Man. So like, yeah, the game's really hard. I'm like, what are you playing on? He's like, I'm playing on it hard. He's like, Well, there you fucking go. <laughs> right. Like I just don't understand the reason to, to jack up what the base difficulty level is to the point where any just regular Joe Schmo want to play a video game for eight hours on a Sunday afternoon needs to jack it down to easy to make any progress instead yeah. of trying to beat one boss for two and a half hours. Dark Siders! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Salty. Or Devil May Cry 3, because it did that too. Yeah, but you know, the thing about Devil May Cry 3 was that back when Devil May Cry 3 came out, I was like in my mid 20s so oh, okay I, I had like nothing to do no friends and a lot of like <laughs> mountain dew and reflexes on my side to the point where i was willing to like suffer through it but yeah i don't know uh and then we got two more uh rage 2 came out with a new trailer i gotta say that like um okay i'm so torn because right we got two sides of an equation on this side of the equation michael is uh, id software has 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 floored me 
between Wolfenstein and Doom about resurrecting old id properties and making them really fun again, right? Yeah. Like I thought Doom was going to be garbage. Doom was amazing. I thought that Wolfenstein was going to be garbage. Wolfenstein was amazing. But Wolfenstein 2, I was ready, and I thought that was pretty good. Quake, that's not for me. It's a multiplayer show. Oh, okay. Yeah. I forgot about that one. So on the one hand, I'm trying not to get, like, I'm trying not to prejudge Rage, too, because so far, these motherfuckers have done really well by me. On the other hand, I'm pretty sure that this is being made by Avalanche, who just got done releasing probably one of the, the pro, no, the worst Far Cry game, or Far, no, Just Cause, oh, God okay. damn it, I'm so sorry, <laughs> uh, Just Cause game that has ever existed, and like, there's a lot of of the footage that we've seen from Rage 2 that reminds me of the footage that we've seen from a game like Just Cause, where it's like, look at all the explosions that can happen, and you're just like, yay! But I don't... I mean, that that alone does not make a game good. Well, or... the trailer that... Uh, the trailer's vibe has this sort of Borderlands-y kind of vibe yeah. that it seems to be trying to go for. Because I remember the first Rage wasn't all that like fun and exciting looking when it came to its trailers. Yes. And this one seems to be trying to go the opposite direction of all that. Yeah, I don't know. I just wonder whether whether all of the bombast of the trailers is hiding a lot of doldrums in between it or like an incomprehensible story or whatnot. Or, see, but then on the other hand of the scale, it's possible that maybe Just Cause 4 sucks because they started diverting resources towards making sure that Rage 2 is really good. Yeah, You know, um, it's possible that the, uh, id Software is the one that's doing like the story plotting or whatever for it. Um, I don't know because there's stuff in this trailer that looks like it's pretty fun. I don't know. It's I'm I'm very conflicted about this game. I really don't know how to judge it until I get my hands on it. I'm but. gonna I'm gonna reserve my judgment until it comes out this time around. Yeah, the first one I remember just looked boring, and it was this okay. One, this one looks like it's trying to do something. Yeah, the first one had the best shotgun I've ever had in any game. Oh yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah, that was the only thing you remembered liking about it. <laughs> yep. And John Goodman. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's in that. Uh, and last but not least from the Game Awards, we got a uh, uh, a trailer for uh, another fighter in the Smash Brothers uh, DLC Part 1. Uh, and who saw this coming? I There was no fucking way I could have saw something like this coming. Joker, the protagonist from Persona 5, is going to be another one of the fighters in Super Smash Brothers. Uh, you know, I we're recording this on the day that Smash comes out, and just looking at it, like, I, how does Nintendo get these things? Like, I'm just looking at the number of those little, like, what do they call them, like spirits or whatever yeah. in in Smash Ultimate, and I'm like, how the fuck did you guys get all this shit in this game? Like, how is Virtua Fighter in a uh, Virtua Fighters in here? Um, Smash Brothers is a huge deal for a lot of a lot of companies, and. The fact that they were like, hey, you want to be in Smash Brothers? It's hard to say no. I guess it's just, it's so weird but to me. Of all things, though, Joker from Persona 5. Like, it's not even, because here's the thing is that most of these, most of the th arguments about, oh, why is this character not in it? Usually came down to, well, they're not a Nintendo character. Right. And now that shit's thrown out the goddamn window because it's anybody's <laughs> fucking game now. Well, because Persona 5 is a PlayStation 4 exclusive, right? Ex like, if, if I remember correctly, yeah. Uh, you know, like. Uh yeah, PlayStation like it's anybody's fucking game. Like I'm like, who the fuck next are they gonna get at like this point? Kratos or yeah, you know? like I'm excited for whoever now. Like, cause you can make an argument about Snake like pretty easily, but there's not much one you can make for these guys right away. Well, but like Snake came out right around the time when what like Metal Gear Solid Two was a thing, right? Because it was um he came out around the time four came out. Because he, he didn't show up till the Wii version. Oh, it was the Wii version? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, because that and the, the background thing was a, a character from Part 4. That was one of them. Um, but yeah, he was... Um, uh, okay. Actually, I guess the other argument can make it for, for Persona is that what Shin Megami Tensei came out on Nintendo stuff, I guess. I don't know. That's literally the only th argument I can make. Well, that's what I was just trying literally to... Literally the only argument I can make. That's what I was just trying <laughs> to think is, is there anybody else on that roster that's from an Atlas game? No. Um... There's, are you talking about for um, Smash? Yeah. No. Every, uh, pretty much everyone has had something Nintendo related. Huh. Other than well, but I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, there's like, uh, I mean, you know, you make a little bit of a stretch with, I understand why, but you make a little bit of a stretch with like, say, Bayonetta or Snake or like, 
um, Cloud, you know, the, yeah. the, the, like it's Final been fancy, that kind of thing. a long time since Cloud has been um, in there. But like some of this stuff, yeah, it just is like it doesn't it it really I don't know it's weird <laughs> it's just it's yeah, very strange. That was one like, of the things where they're like, well, there's certain people in the that vote. You remember? I can't remember the, the poll they did. Right. Where they're like, well, we can't put them in there because we don't. It's not going to be easy, kind of thing. Little or it's dumb. Like like people kept voting for Shrek because they're idiots. Um, Shrek? Yeah, it's one of those things where if you ask the internet to vote for something, Shrek is going to end up in there somehow. I mean, like, okay, I, like Ken and Ryu, I understand, but all a lot of the characters that Ryu. came out from the last one, yeah, had it blew my mind at that point. Like Cloud, Ryu, um, like those two specifically were were huge gets. They're like, how the fuck did you pull something like this off? Right. Like even when Sonic was first announced, I remember for the Wii version, I was like, that's fucking interesting. Actually, it's very strange because looking through it, like I feel like those. Those are the only, because I mean, like Ken and Reed, they make sense because they're from fighting games, right? Like, well, that's what made it weird is that like we never, we didn't expect them to put actual fighting game characters in Smash Brothers, right? Like the, the joke has always been, it's like, well, Smash is competitive, but it's not Street Fighter competitive, and then they added fucking Street Fighter characters to it. Yeah, okay, I take it, I take it all back. Like Snake and Cloud are the only two that that don't make sense in this roster. Yeah, uh, they're, they're really the biggest outliers. Yeah, and, and Ryu and Ken. Or at least right now, or somewhat. Uh, everybody else is pretty much a Nintendo character. Yeah, or at least on a on, on their system somehow. Yeah, There's yeah. Shit ton of Fire Emblem characters. Yeah, so many of them. That was the joke for a while: is that every new character was just going to be a Fire Emblem character. Well, and then what's this other? What was this other franchise with uh, uh, the Xenoblade Gears? Z- oh yeah, Xenoblade. Um, so as much as Xenoblade stuff in there, but all that was, you know, those was all on the Wii. So. Yeah, all that stuff was on the Wii. Um, and um, then you know you got Pokemon, but that yeah, and Bayonetta was on the, the the Wii U at that point. Yeah, I mean the fact um, that Nintendo that still was surprising Bayonetta. at the time. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It makes no know. sense whatsoever. First, like he is the like Joker is the most like what the fuck. All right. Like out of every, out of anybody, that's why I was like, yeah. Before it was just like they have all been kind of on Nintendo in some fashion, maybe. But this is just like, yeah, it's anybody's fucking game now. So Let's do the shit. <laughs> so who do you want in there? Goku. Um, I just... I still would want him to be in it. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna say no, but yeah. uh, I want Wonder Red from the Wonderful 101 still. Okay. That would still make more sense than Joker would. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, as you said, at this point, who who? Yeah. It, That's the thing is, I don't know. Like, yeah. I used to be like, well, maybe. It's like, now it's like, I don't fucking know. It's anybody's game now. Yeah. Maybe they can put Trek in it. Who fucking knows? Well, and the <laughs> fact that, the, that they announced Piranha Plant, right? Yeah. And it was like, okay, well, you're definitely sticking to your Nintendo guns. And it's like, and then this character from a franchise that hasn't even been on a Nintendo platform for years. Yeah. It's like, and then Joker. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Oh, that was funny when you when you first told him. He's like, yeah, Joker's in Smash Brothers. I was just like. The the, DC, the Joker, the Joker, or what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think right now of just I'm, I want to look up like, did Atlas even have any games on the Wii U? Uh, I, I can't think of I can't think they did unless Citizens of Earth counts. <gasps> no, they did. Uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Remember Sharp Fe, which was the Shin Megami Tensei Fire Emblem crossover. Yeah, that's right. Uh, because the Shin, well, the Shin Megami Tensei's stuff has been on Nintendo. Yeah, the, I'm just the, trying to think of when the last part four was on the 3DS. Oh yeah, that's right. And they they actually just recently re released the uh, like I think it was like the first one or the one that Devil was in space something. Uh, I'm just trying to look through here and try to figure that out. Anyway, you know what? This is some shit we could do on our own time. We're already away, though. Holy shit. <laughs> hour and 15 minutes. That's fucking crazy. Uh, we are going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, I am I'm sad to say that we're not going to be able to get into any questions this week because uh, we still have a bunch of other news that actually oh happened. Oh, God. So stick around, and we'll be talking about that in just a second. And now let's have the regular podcast, I guess. Uh, and more news came in. Because there was plenty of news that happened before the video game uh, awards dropped a shitload of trailers all on top of our heads. Um, and a lot of it's kind of... Uh, is it me? It's very shaky. Let's call it shaky. So, all right. like, Look, guys, it's not within my power to just ignore when big things happen. And frankly, I'm tired of dumping on Bethesda, but... <laughs> 
Um, they did it to themselves. Okay, so uh, like, let's go with the good news first, right? The good news is that Bethesda has heard all of the wailing and the gnashing of teeth and all of the things, and, and I agree, uh, as last week's podcast when I was talking about the nylon bag gate or whatever we're calling it. Uh, um, so they have, a, they have said that they are now going to be sending out the actual canvas bags. Yeah. They're going to be making those. They're going to be sending them out. Uh, all you got to do is you got to fill out a trouble ticket and uh, and send it in. And if you bought the collector's edition, you'll be getting a free bag. So, yay! Something to put your gym clothes in now. Cool, I guess. Like, you know, false advertising, your way out of that. <laughs> well, at least they made good, right? You know, that's one of those things where... If if I if you don't give somebody who did something scummy the ability to make good and then apologize, then like why even bother, right? So I think the issue with that a lot of people have is that they gave them the chance like three times and they kept fucking it up until finally getting to this point. Yep, but they but, did. Yeah, they, they got did. there. They did. They got there. Yeah. Uh, and that's the good news. <laughs> the bad news is that somehow I don't know how this would happen, but somehow apparently if you had submitted a trouble ticket to Bethesda, somehow you were able to look at everybody else's tickets, uh, including like their home address, their credit card number. <laughs> like apparently you could even resolve other people's open tickets. Oh my God. This was brief, but it happened. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> so yeah. How the fuck do you even do something like that? I don't know. Um, oh, my God. You people can't tell, but I'm actually <laughs> face palming. I've <laughs> never face palmed in like ages, but holy fuck. Jesus H fucking Christ. Yep. I and, and, and the fact that 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 right before this happened was when they announced the canvas bag. So they had all of the people with the collector's edition submitting the tickets to get the bag. And then their ticket system allowed people to look at all of this information from all of the other people. As someone who works in support, <laughs> I have no fucking idea how they did that. It seems like one of those things where you're like, what? How? Like, how do you even design a system that you could accidentally give a user access to your full database i guess i understand this wasn't even a hack it wasn't like some security flaw that they had to patch in like their server system it was just something fucked up i mean i don't really know but, but how though like i'm just I, oh my god yep so <laughs> fuck guys uh this is a this is actually a really good moment to say uh even your I, fucking like support system has bugs <laughs> uh i'm actually really considering starting to do this michael but like uh, I don't know how many people out there. I'm going to just take a brief Jeff public service announcement to the world. Um, this is it, it, this shit is starting to get stupid to the point where, you know, if you do a lot online, I'm on the verge of doing this. I think in the new year, if I have like a day where I don't have six million things I need to get done, I'm going to do this. But like get a password manager, right, uh, that generates, you know, encrypted password like Password manager is software that you log into that then generates like, you know, big hash passwords for everything. It keeps track of them, so it'll yeah. log in on your computer. And then there are actually plenty of services out there, or there's a service, I don't really remember what it's called, and this, so this is not a great public service announcement, but I watch a lot of Philip DeFranco show, and he talks about this, about there's like services that you can go to where like um, – you can create like a one-time use credit card. So it's like Oh yeah, I've heard of this. You places. use your credit card to basically generate a new free credit card that you can then use for an online purchase so that if like the assholes get their information, they're just getting your fake drop credit card, right? Yeah. Like um and as somebody who just recently had their credit card information stolen, that sounds really useful because even though I got all my money back, like it wasn't, you know, uh, this happened to me before. Yeah. Call my bank, they reverse the charges, they issue me a new card. But like every day I get a new email from some service that's like, hey, buddy, uh, we can't process your credit card. And I'm just like, oh, Jesus. Because, you know, it's been five years I've had this credit card. I've been oh, yeah. dropping it all over the internet. They're just like, the latest one is the toll roads here in Austin are just like, hey, man, we can't charge your credit card for toll roads. And I'm just like, ah. Back. Well, at least they told you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, Toro's pretty bad about that here. Boy, Bethesda, it hasn't been a good bunch of years for you, has it? Like, no. Uh, I, uh, uh, eesh. All this happened in the span of like two weeks, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Like, I just, Fallout 76, man. Ugh, oof. Um, Jesus Christ. And as if not, you know, <sighs> all right. The, the last bit of news for this is that apparently um, there's not going to be any more patches on 76 until next year, but they are going to be trying to patch in, like, patch out some bugs uh, and then patch in some stuff like, like, relocating camps, push to talk. Apparently, they're also going to be looking at um, implementing, like, new a faction-based PvP system, which I think that sounds like it could be good. Like, you got to join a gang to be safe on this server because yeah. gangs are running around um, and some new quest stuff. But I don't know, man. Like, this, this could be... I, I don't know. I feel like there had to be a moment when the video game industry pushed the current trends too far. Like last year it was Battlefront 2, right? Where it was yeah. like you pushed it too far and everybody was like, nope. that Nope, we're not doing this anymore. Like we're not just going to sit here and eat the shit all day long. We'll eat some of it, but like you can't just give me a, a full plate of crap and then expect me to eat it. Uh, and I don't know. I wonder how this is going to reflect on them or if we're all just going to forget about it by the end of 2019. The like, thing is Fallout pushed it pretty far yeah but the thing is i still talk to people who are still like well i'm still having some fun with it so they have oh 76 yeah because a lot of it a lot of the people i talk to are still having fun with it or just people who hang out with their friends on it yeah kind of thing and so it's it's kind of working is the thing it's just that that's that's the thing i think that's the main reason why it hasn't rubbed people the wrong way too much yet is that some people are having fun with it so there so it has its defenders with with battlefront 2 and you know like it had like no one that was defending those situations. Yeah, eh, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I it's it also makes me wonder though. Like whenever I hear that description of a game where people are just like, "Oh yeah, I've had a lot of fun hanging out with my friends," and it's like, "Okay, but like, are you are you going to play? Be, are you and your friends going to play Fallout seventy six all of next year, or are you just yeah. gonna, like the next Destiny thing's about to come out? Are you just going to go back to Destiny two and then play whatever the next?" Like, are you just going to bounce from game to game to game to game to game? Because I feel like they need to keep people interested. But again, I also come back to the argument that I've made in the past of you have to wonder what is the minimum number of people that they need playing 76 and then actively putting money into it to keep it profitable internally, to have a small team that continues to work on it. Right? Yeah, like it's it's that's the toughest thing is like, is this going to survive at all? I don't know. Like It's it's just. So many people just don't give a fuck about it. I mean, here's the question, or here here's a question. Again, I mentioned this in the in the first part, but like, are Metal Gear Survive servers still turned on? Like, are there enough people that are playing? Like, because I've seen, I've I've actually seen internally that you don't actually have to have like a huge team to keep a game like this going, right? Oh, okay. If you have a dedicated fan base and you have like one or two artists. Maybe a single producer, maybe one or two QA people, and you know one programmer that does it part time. Then those people can basically just say, you know, you think about like one developer, right, who just goes in and they spend all day every day just making assets for Fallout seventy six. Then it's like that's not a huge team. You don't have to have like you know a hundred people working on yeah. it. You just have in between this update and the one that comes in six months, you got somebody that's coming in every day to make new gun, new guns, new like structures, melee weapons, quests, and things like that. Yeah, and then you just give it to your one QA person to mess with, and then you just keep making money from the um, uh, microtransactions that are coming in. So. It's very uh, interesting that you think they probably still have a QA guy, though. <laughs> I don't know. Is I mean, the Buckfish. Uh, I don't fucking care. It's Fallout. No one cares. <laughs> I guess that, that's the thing is that like I've worked for a company that that I, I, I at one point I worked for a company that was doing that that had like a a game that had a very low player base. Oh, okay. And when you think about, like, you only need, like, one QA person to make sure that it isn't, like, drastically broken. Yeah. And then that same person, once whatever your expansion launches, can just be, like, watching the game and being like, oh, well, that's broken. So today my goal is going to be reproduce that, submit it as a bug, make sure that it gets fixed in tomorrow's build, yeah. et cetera, you know. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. It, it might end up being because I can't imagine that Elder Scrolls Online has a huge number of people playing it. But that shit's been going for like what four or five years now. Well, according to that uh, fucking Game Awards commercial, there's pl there's dozens of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
There's at least 12, <laughs> maybe 13. Uh, uh, just uh, Jeff Feely's brother or whatever. Keely's brother is playing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's like, I play it. My brother is always super busy to play it. And he's Jake Keeley's in the background, or Jeff Keeley's in the background going, yeah, I just don't play it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, who knows? Maybe Jeff Keeley is playing Red Dead Redemption online instead, uh, which is apparently getting a big tune. This tune up, this shouldn't be like a big uh, surprise, but, um, you know, like I saw some outlets last week that were talking about like the, they were doing a, a moderate like estimation of like, this is the problem with these games that have yeah. an in game currency where it's like, all right, what is the lowest amount of money that you can get from a quest? How long does that quest take? And then how much does like a gun cost? And let's do the math on this. And it's like, oh, it's 300 hours to get the Mauser. Well, go fuck yourself, Strauss Zelnick. Like, yeah. uh, so apparently they are they're changing you know they're tuning it i mean it is a beta and they should be doing this stuff anyway yeah uh i didn't really have a lot of fun when i was playing it mostly because of the horse collision because oh yeah. was playing it with we played it on the stream last week and like you accidentally get too close to your friend and then oh shit everybody <laughs> fell over off their horses <laughs> or you know there's a lot of the radiant quests where it's just like oh get this cart and then or get this stagecoach and drive it to this town and then when you're doing that it like kind of sets up like a thing where anybody around you can just come attack that stagecoach like they don't have in grand theft auto 5 you can literally just turn yourself to like i don't want to do do this pve bullshit yeah it's got the the passive mode right but in red dead apparently i don't think you can do that yet uh, i don't know it may have by the time this comes out who knows they may have patched that all the way in but that's kind of a beta i assume it's going to be in there eventually hopefully i would hope so uh in any case uh apparently if you uh, uh at all logged in during the beta period they're going to be giving you 250 in-game dollars and 15 gold bars which is actually a pretty pretty hefty sum it's actually pretty good um and they're going to be doing a lot of like tuning and fine tuning so i don't know i mean like it seemed like it could be interesting hopefully something will happen uh there's some there's some fun to be had in that online mode but that economy is, is really it's, it might make or break that thing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What was weird for me was that I played a bunch. I kept coming back to GTA 5, and I felt like every time they had a big expansion, it's like they just give you a bunch of money so that you could start that expansion or whatever. For but, all we know, it's going to be the same thing that happened to GTA 5's economy where people were just hacking money oh. and giving it to random fucking people. Yeah. So yeah. Who knows? Maybe they'll break the economy again. Who knows? Well, if you're going to get money from somebody, it'll probably be somebody that's playing the game right now because they've also said they're probably not going to be resetting the progression. Oh, okay. Uh, so that anybody playing in the beta is probably going to get to keep everything that they got in the beta when it flips over to be the actual game itself, which is pretty cool. Um, from there, let's talk about Fortnite. Uh, Fortnite Season 7 is happening. It's obviously Christmas-themed. They had a cute little trailer. Uh, a bunch of ice is coming into the map, and apparently... There are airplanes now. Yeah, there's going to be dog fighting and and the, or something. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I I don't know whether this sick ass battle Santa costume is going to be something that you can pick up, but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, as always, I am a hundred percent into looking at what Fortnite is doing and zero percent into actually playing Fortnite. Um, One hundred percent, yes. <laughs> I do think again that it just it it does. Like it does want it does completely. Let's, hold on, let me let me say this the right way. <laughs> it makes PUBG look like garbage. Oh, like absolutely, pure unfiltered garbage. Every time they come up with something new, it's like PUBG is just like we have this one map, I guess. Right. It's like, but we have all this badass shit, and we had fucking Thanos and shit. Yeah. Like, Fuck, guys, you guys look like assholes. <laughs> yeah, we had that food fight mode. We got like dune buggies. Like, it is crazy every time they come out with a new trailer for something. Yep. Every time it comes out, I want to play it, and then I'm like, oh yeah, but I don't actually want to play it. So, uh, but you know what? I do kind of want to play this other thing. I don't know if you saw this, but the other thing that they're adding in is that apparently um, they have the creative mode now for Fortnite. Uh, where you can actually build stuff using the the in-game tools. Oh, okay. Uh, and they actually have it's and it's called the block. And apparently, they have a thing that's happening where um, there's a part of the map that they have flattened out, which is now called the block, where they can actually put in like structures that people have made and submitted into your game. So oh, it's like wow. a place that that 
yeah, that they can literally put in stuff that that has been made in whatever their creative mode is. Which that's really fucking neat, actually. Again, like, like wow, that's fuck. incredible. <laughs> like it's just creative every time they come up. Like every time they're like, we're gonna do this crazy fucking thing because why the fuck not? Yep, because we can and cool. And I'm like, you know what? Good on you. We are fact, printing money right now. Uh, no one, and we can do whatever the fuck we want right now. <laughs> that's true. And do you know what they are doing with all that money that they're printing? What's that? They're taking on steam, motherfuckers. Oh, jeez. Because one of the other things that we saw at uh, the Game Awards was the actual Epic Game Store launch trailer, uh, which actually had a bunch of different games, including um, uh, that, what was that game that we played? Ashen? No. Yeah, Ashen and was Hades were both on there. Oh, yeah. Ashen and Hades were both on there. Uh, a bunch of other games like the Super Meat Boy Forever and uh, Outer Wilds uh, and then that Maneater the Shark PG, which was yeah. one of my favorite things from E3 this year. Um, the DZ game, Z, uh, the Hello Neighbor game, Infinite Factory, or not Infinite Factory, but uh, uh, yeah, a, a bunch of different things. And um, so allow me to wax for a moment because. I thought this was a kid show. <laughs> <laughs> eh. <laughs> Pubic hair jokes, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh okay so do you know i'm gonna ask you a bunch of things and it wouldn't surprise me if you if you know them or not and uh we actually talked about some of these on the podcast a while back so did you know that uh epic the epic launcher also has uh, integration into the unreal store front right so if you license unreal you can buy assets that people have made off of their unreal storefront to literally put into unreal because you can just load up unreal and then use the epic store to buy assets and put together a video game, right? Oh, okay. Uh, earlier this year, Epic actually changed the ratio of how much of those assets the person who made the asset, how much of the money the asset creator gets for the better. They made it like like something like 85% up from like 65%. So like if you oh, make wow. an asset, or I don't even know if 65 is right. I'm just, I'm just throwing out numbers Solo. here. They, in any case, they made it so that like you get more. If you make a lamp and then somebody buys the lamp off of the asset store to put in their video game, you get more money. Like Unity does the same thing, right? You can buy yeah. stuff off the Unity store. Uh, they're and when they were asked about it, the reason that they did that was because they're making so goddamn much money off of Fortnite that they don't need the money. So they were like, we're not going to be greedy. We're going to just let you have more of the money that, you know, we're going to take a cut to put it on the store and, you know, do it's all that it stuff. it to you, the people. Right, <laughs> right. So the Epic Games Store just launched. And the way that they're taking on Steam is that they have set it up so that um, the developer of the game gets 88% of whatever the profit is that's a lot and they get 12 yeah and like on steam it's like well we're gonna get to Steam in a second but previously yeah. it's been like a 70 30 split for the most part like if it's a um if it's like a unity game you get 70 30 if it's actually an unreal game it's like unreal uh unreal engine gets like five percent and then steam gets like 30 percent and then you get 65 percent. but for the most part you are get steam is always taking about a 30 percent chunk and Epic is taking a 12% chunk, which I think is really interesting because a lot of people on the PC probably have that Epic launcher installed yeah. for Fortnite. Because up until now, it was like Shadow Complex, Fortnite, a few other games that Unreal had published, or Epic had published. Um, and this is interesting because I feel like this could be an honest-to-God like competitor to Steam because, you know... Ubisoft store is Ubisoft. Yeah. Uh, you know, the the what? Bethesda store has just got five games on it. Blizz yeah. uh, Battle.net has like six games on it. Origin is all just EA related. Origin's all EA garbage. Uh, good old games is probably the closest thing. GOG Galaxy is probably the closest thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. But they don't have a lot of AAA stuff. Not really. They're they're good, but a lot of a they lot of a lot times. Of good old games. What's that? They said they have a lot of good old games. Yeah, a lot of times I feel like their store gets a little choked with the number of games they have. Whereas, um, you know, having a like this is an interesting response to Steam of saying like, okay, if you put your game on our store, one, you're going to get more money from everything that's published, and two, at this point, 
putting your game on the Epic Store could actually get you a better return than putting it on Steam because Steam is full of garbage. Yeah. Trash. Like the uh, nothing but trash every single day comes out on Steam. Like what was that last year where they said like more games came out on Steam in 2017 than did all the years previous to 2017 oh, right, or whatever. Yeah. Um and there so, were a bunch of random like visual novels and shit like that. Yeah. Oh, well, and then just straight up porn because video game or because Steam yeah. was like, who cares? So now, I mean, like we bought straight up porno hentai games off of Steam and played them. Oh, um, yeah. So that's really interesting. That's really interesting. And the other thing is that Epic doesn't need the sales to be super good on their store because again they're making all the money in the world with Fortnite right now. It's fucking crazy how much money they're making right now. <laughs> so it's like that's an actual competitor, right? That's yeah. an actual honest to god competitor to Steam that could make a better front end, a better client, you know. We actually used it yesterday to buy Hades on and it seemed like it was pretty good. Um now strangely Steam announced just recently that they're changing the split of who gets what amount of money on huh. Steam. Wonder why that happened. <laughs> who could have saw that coming? Yes. Uh, this They were saying that starting October 1st, which is backdated, that, um, however, this is interesting, okay? If your game makes $10 million on Steam then Steam will only take 25% instead of 30%. If your game makes $50 million, uh, then I believe that the split goes to like 80-20 or something like that. Um, yeah. At $50 million, the revenue share will adjust to 80%, 20%. So that's interesting. However, a lot of indie developers were like, what? Fuck you. Yeah, that does nothing for any of those people. <laughs> yeah. Like, if I make $100,000 on my game on Steam, I, you're still taking 30%. But if you make $10 million, then it goes down. It's like, hmm. Well, that, that's still like, even if you make it to $50 million, it's still not as much as fucking Epic Games is offering you still. Yes. Now, obviously, Steam still has the advantage of having a huge, you know, install base, right? Yeah. Like, like if you were to say to me, "Hey, you gotta you gotta stop using Steam. You gotta start using Epic Client," and be like, "Guy, I've got four hundred games on my Steam list. Like, I'm not gonna stop using Steam." And that's like a, the least amount of games I've ever heard on Steam in a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, but I find it interesting. I like the idea of there being a competitor, somebody to make Steam, somebody to twist Steam's arm a little bit to make it so that it isn't a fucking dumpster fire when you go to their page. The right? thing is, no one's ever like Steam has just been kind of trugging along because no one else has ever like come at them in any way. This is the first time it like this is like that part in Luke Cage season two where he's, he's just walking down the street and Bushmaster just punches him the fuck out. Yeah, that's what this is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. Like it um it's interesting it's interesting. I mean, the way that Steam has gone about trying to fix unquote quote unquote fix the problem is by basically having like, you know, um like the new like hot new releases. Yeah. I but you still have to scroll way the fuck down past the dumb curation menus, past the thing. I've been trying to turn off VR games in my Steam library for a long time. Like just Please don't show me these. I don't have VR. And I've done everything that everybody has sent in telling me to do it. Go into your settings. Do this. Uncheck this. Check on this. Uh -huh. Doesn't ever work. They keep showing me VR games. In fact, they'll show me VR games with an icon that says, like, you said you didn't want to see these. <laughs> and I'm like, why do you want to see these, motherfucker? I don't want to see all the bad movies you've got. I don't want to see Christ. all this bullshit. But, like, I was just pulling this up to, to take a look on Steam of how many games came out. It is... 11.15 in the evening, and today on Steam, uh, one page, pages, like number of pages. Here, oh, okay. Let's click on uh, here. We got um, page, page, page. Here's two pages. Oops. Um, well, I think I just closed it. At least, at least two pages. And how many would you assume were on each one of those pages? Like five. I think it's more than that, to be honest. Um, like... How the fuck are you supposed to find the diamond in the rough like yeah, on Steam anymore? Happening. 
Like you have to rely on it. And not just that, but I've noticed that like sometimes, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22. Okay, so we're on 22. Right, and we got one page. Uh, we got two pages. This is December 7th, 2018. Two and a half pages. So what is that? 40, 50 games That's that came out bit. today? That's at least like almost, yeah, a little more than 50. Today. Yeah, just today. Just today. Like, Fuck. and you know, the fact that Hentai Square Puzzle came out today. Yeah, that's actually what it says, by the way. Black <laughs> Annex, 30 Days to Survive, Escape Velocity, Ball Out. Here, look, here's a VR game, Rapid Fire. Evil Bank Manager, Hunter, Kick the Puppet, which I take offense to. Uh, <laughs> Hot Puzzle Girls, CL Fledge, Chess Sphere, Russian Roulette, One Life. Have you ever heard of any of these? Do you know what any of these games are? Well, I can. I have an idea what hentai puzzle is, quest is, or whatever the fuck yeah. it's called. The Game Show, Mike Goes on a Hike, Halloween Arkanoid 2, Whale Island, Jigsaw 360, Darwin's Test, Not in Heaven, Project Amalathea. Like, none of these, I mean, like, I... And there's no reason to look. I used to have to do this every day. Was look through these, trying to find like what a good game was. Yeah. And it wasn't fair to the developers because all I was looking at was like the one screenshot that kind of pops up when you hover over it, and just like, nope, not no, nope, nope. So I don't know. There, nope. I feel like there's room for a curated game store. I don't know. We'll have to see whether they do. Whether they manage to get like their their lineup, their initial lineup is very good. So yeah, and most of the games you mentioned on Steam sound like those fake covers at an IKEA. <laughs> I was thinking they 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 feel like uh you know when you're browsing on uh Netflix and you're like in horror and then you start scrolling way down oh, and yeah. you're just like what the fuck <laughs> is all of this? Uh it's a lot of like random shit. It's just yeah, it's exactly like that actually. They made five ginger dead man movies? <laughs> like what in the world? Yeah. It's exactly like that. It is. It is. So anyway, I don't know. Uh, it seems pretty cool. We'll have to see whether it manages to to be any good or not. But but speaking of Valve, uh, Valve also managed to piss a bunch of people off this week when uh, they put out a Battle Royale version of Counter-Strike. Oh, God. Which is like a, uh, it's like, what, 16 players or something like that? It's a smaller game. Um, <clears throat> I actually watched a little bit of it online. It's kind of weird. It's like... Uh, instead of finding guns, it's like you find money, and then you buy guns off of an iPad, and a drone brings the gun to you. But other players can shoot the drone down and try to get it before you can like get to it or That's whatever. Kind of, what? Is it okay. Yeah, it's really weird. I haven't played Counter Strike in a long time, but the reason Hello. that people are mad is because um, they also made CS:GO free to play. Oh God. Yep. That's yep. Oh God. <laughs> and apparently, if you've pre, but then there was a weird thing that I was reading about this, where apparently, if you previously bought CS:GO, you are upgraded to quote unquote Prime status in Counter Strike, which means that you can only play with other people who have Prime status. That's weird. Which apparently means that what, like the free to play is like hackers and garbage people, and then like. You have to pay to get into the servers where nobody's cheating or whatever. Maybe I, uh, that's fucking weird. I don't know. It's really strange. I don't. I haven't played Counter Strike in years, but it seems like a. It seems like a weird thing to me now that I think about it. That Counter Strike still costs money to play, considering. I guess, yeah, I guess they actually. Yeah, when you think about it, <laughs> yeah. But on the other hand, that just seems kind of strange. Like that it's, whole I don't thing know. seems strange. It's just uh, we'll see how it goes. I, yep. I guess I don't know. I watched the guy stream the online for a little bit, and I was like, okay, well, I mean, I still don't want to play Counter Strike, but yeah. You know. uh, also, I don't want to play Call of Duty, but uh, you know what they're doing with Call of Duty is they finally done it. You can now apparently, or either now or in the near future, you're going to be able on the PC version of um, Black Ops to buy for thirty dollars just blackout and competitive multiplayer without the the zombie mode. So half the price for two-thirds of the game, I guess. Hooray? Question mark? Well, you know, for years the question has been like, shouldn't you just break the two parts of Call of Duty apart and sell them a la carte? So that like if people want to play the multiplayer, they don't have to spend sixty dollars on a single player version as well. You know, these big lavishly produced stories. But apparently they're doing that, which I think I don't know. I, I'm I'm still curious to know whether next year we're going to get 
a story mode, a story campaign for Call of Duty. Yeah, I don't even, huh. I don't know. I guess we'll see how it goes. Um, apparently, people really like blackout mode and uh, multiplayer. Which is you know, good for them. Yeah, not my cup of tea. Do it is my cup of tea. That's giant monkeys punching people. And that's just what we got in this trailer for brand new developer digital game that's coming out called Ape Out. Um, which it is looks fucking fun as shit. Really strange. It's like a very brightly colored top down. Like you're playing a big gorilla that's broken out of a cage and is just murdering everybody. Yeah, he's trying to get to freedom by just murdering everything in his path that's trying to get him. Yep. Uh, and it kind of reminds me of Hotline Miami with the kind of top down. But we see this ape like grabbing people and forcing them to shoot other people and throwing them at other people and throwing them out windows and throwing doors at them and there's blood everywhere and oh my god yeah he's like using them, some of them as shields and yep. shit it's fucking crazy it looks absolutely bizarre it's also got this really kind of like high contrast kind of sketchy look to it um very very bizarre looking it very cool gorgeous, looking gorgeous though it looks so fucking cool yeah and i uh, there's so many Harambe memes are probably going to be made involving <laughs> this, but just when we thought that we were done with Harambe memes, exactly. Well, also, there's one part that I noticed where he's got like a like a big cat friend, like it looks like a tiger or something. Yeah, and I think there's a bear on the other one. Oh man, that was it. it just looks really fun. It's even uh, got a hallway fight like Daredevil. Yeah, <laughs> and strangely, Nintendo Switch and PC. Yeah, out of everything that I expected it to be announced for, that's not what I anticipated. At yep. least the Switch one. Uh, that's good for Nintendo though for grabbing it. Oh yeah. Well, you remember? I don't think I think everybody forgot about it. I bought it and forgot about it. Remember at E3 when Nintendo was like, "Yeah, we've got this game. It's called Garage, and it's like super violent, and we can't even show you a lot of it here in our our." Oh, that's Nintendo right. Garage. That game came out. That game it came out came this out? year. Yeah, I didn't even it, notice. No, it's out. I bought it. I never got a chance to actually play it because oh, it just came out in the middle of other stuff. But yeah, Nintendo's got. They got plenty of weird shit. They're fucking I mean, going for it. They put out that Senran Kagura, like, stroke the girl's armpit, like, oh, until she... been coming out with those, though. <laughs> well, but not... I mean, like, on the Wii U, I don't remember there being a lot of those. I mean, like, I... The piece... I could have sworn it was, but I must be thinking of... They think it was on a 3DS, actually. A 3DS, I could see that, because it had the touch screen, so you could do the whole, yeah. like... T check the witches for demons by rubbing them all over on this touch screen um <laughs> but it's weird because there's like there's some of that stuff on the nintendo switch but then at the same time apparently sony we didn't even talk about it on any of the shows but like sony has been basically trying to cut the fan service sexy games kind of oh, out yeah, of their library right. um anyway yeah ape out it's cool exciting go check it out uh february 7th february 7th yep we also got a trailer for Prey Typhon Hunter, uh, which is, I think that this was announced a long time ago, which was it's like a five-on-one asynchronous multiplayer mode where a bunch of people play as the Typhon, as the actual Typhon, and then they're trying to hide from slash ambush one player who's playing as a person trying to find them. Um, pretty cool. I'm, I'm, it's interesting to me that uh, uh, Prey is still putting out stuff i think it's great and yeah. that game made me paranoid for a while after i, <laughs> I played it but i always think of this one joke that always pops up they're like why do you have a gun is like mimics and then i laughed the toaster laughed we shot the toaster it was a good time <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh that's coming out on december 11th and it will actually be free if you bought the dlc moon crash which is amazing and everybody should play it and i think it's really good so that um we also got <laughs> A full trailer for Killing Floor 2's new Christmas uh, uh, expansion, Seasons Beatings. Uh, last year, it was fighting the Krampus. And this year, Santa Claus is getting ripped and in shape. And he's coming for you, Krampus. And he's got Gary Busey as a voice. Which is fucking amazing. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny because I don't think any of this makes me really want to play Killing Floor 2. But it looks pretty cool. There's some new guns new axes there's a crossover with road redemption where you get the spike bat um and then all the kind of like zombie elves zombie gingerbread men and santa with a gigantic krampus axe yeah so. it's real interesting and, and this trailer has you know them showing gary Busey doing this at the very end and 
I feel like someone in the studio was like, should we, should we stop him? <laughs> <laughs> no, you just let Gary be Gary. His manager's like, nah, he'll run out of steam soon. He'll just, just keep going. Go. Or maybe he just broke in and started saying random Santa lines. They're like, yeah, we could use this, I guess. <laughs> Gary Busey's just kicking the doors. He's like, I'm in your game now. I'm doing this now. Uh, Give me money. We had another interesting trailer for Let It Die, which is the Stay Tuned trailer. Uh, this doesn't really show that much that wasn't already in Let It Die, but the idea that they're still planning on doing stuff with Let It Die is uh, exciting to me because it's a real interesting game, and, you know, Suda51 may be a wackadoo motherfucker, but at least he's interesting. Absolutely. And it's it's free to play still, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the hooks in it for um, for getting you to spend money are, are relatively... Th- th- they're still there. A lot of it is like um, there's an there's an elevator that you have to buy into that will kind of get you back to where you were a oh, lot yeah. faster. Um, it's kind of grindy. There's some good stuff in there. Uh, it's definitely one of those things. It's kind of like Warframe where I'm like, oh, hey, okay. you know what? Uh, it's free to play. Try it out. And then if you don't like it, you know, you haven't spent any money on it. So. Yeah. Um, and then last but not least, uh, we actually got a release date for uh, Below, finally, from Cappy, Cappy Games. I don't know. I feel like I'm the only one who's been trying to figure this out because it was announced in 2013 oh, fuck, yeah. um, as an Xbox One PC game. Uh, and it's finally going to be out on December 14th. We got a trailer for that, just kind of showing stuff. Cappy Games has always been a really interesting... Um, oh, my God. Sorry. Um, uh, something terrible just happened. Anyway, uh Cappy Games has always been a really interesting studio to me. Like I like their, uh, I like their games. Um, that's not the one I was looking for. Yeah, I was like, is that a Capybara? <laughs> Capybara? <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, it is a ca- Capybara. Capybara Games is the name of the company. But like, if you just go to Cappy Games, it's like one of those. I feel like it's one of those like porn game websites. Uh, so don't go there. But in any case, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's coming out. Um, and yeah, looks great. I don't know. I think it looks really, really good. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see next week. Uh, and then last but not least, we've got a few different just quick announcements. Uh, Overwatch is coming back to Winter Wonderland on the 11th. Uh, they're making uh, making over the Blizzard Park with holiday decorations. Hooray. Yep. And it's got kind of a nighttime thing. I'm sure I'll be playing that at some point. Reinhardt better have some sort of Santa Claus outfit is all I'm saying. Hasn't he already had something for uh, Winter Wonderland? I don't Wonderland? know. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't touched it in a while. Um, THQ Nordic's been snapping up franchises recently, and just last week they pulled in uh, Carmageddon. So hopefully we'll be seeing a new Carmageddon game. Oh, cool. I'm pretty sure that the last Carmageddon game uh, that came out was a big old uh, wreck a uh, big old train wreck. So we'll see if this one is any good. Um, yeah. And that's it, actually. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, sorry. So I, much news. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I had two more tabs. And eventually I was going to say that uh, uh, there was a whole thing about there's a the guy who's suing uh, Epic over the Fortnite dances, uh, a rapper who created like a specific dance. Oh. Um, but there's some know. questions there about whether. You can actually sue somebody over. I'll have to look into that. A dance. <laughs> yeah, that's legally speaking. Yeah, is that a thing that you can do? Uh, ki- the answer is kind of. The answer is kind of. Uh, and you know what? We've got about f- about 10, 15 minutes left of what I normally would have for a podcast. So, uh, let's talk about Dark Siders three for a second. Sure. So, uh, <laughs> last week I beat Dark Siders three, which is the latest game in the Dark Siders franchise, uh, and it's not. It's like. Uh, it's just mm. so anyway uh those were words yeah <laughs> okay uh let's put it this way let me let me start at the very beginning dark siders one when it was announced looked like to me um kind of bad right like uh-huh. it was just like look at this big joe madera death guy he's a horseman of the apocalypse bah! it was like oh okay it's a third person action game with kind of silly character design okay and then everyone was like no seriously it's zelda like you got to check it out and i did and it was great like you know there were all these puzzles that you could do you you know like they gave you a portal gun and the game just like it just shamelessly ripped off whatever the fuck it wanted to in the name of fun it was like hey uh zelda's got a hook shot hook shot's not a copyright thing you're gonna get a hook shot (laughs) you got a hook shot 
Uh, and in between, they had all these kind of cool demons. Like, you remember there was a time when Zelda was very kind of like cute, right, around the Wind Waker time yeah. period. Everybody just wanted a dark Zelda game, and, you know, nobody was getting one, so I was like, hey, here's one. Then Darksiders 2 came out, and I was like, oh, well, this is death. Um, and it was like, kind of like God of War, but then it had like a fair amount of either like, I don't know, God of War slash Devil May Cry, kind of third-person action game, but then yeah. with a heavy Diablo loot system built in, right? So they were taking this Diablo thing. They still had a lot of the kind of Zelda-esque puzzles where you would have temples that you would have to open up. Uh, but what was really interesting about it was, you know, war accidentally kicks off the apocalypse in the first game, and then you have to come back to kind of figure out, uh, you're trying to keep, like, demons from un- upsetting the balance from the Charred Council. In the second game, uh, Death literally goes to the Tree of Life to try to recreate the Earth to like basically erase the crime of his brother, right? Oh, okay. So it's like that's a very Lord of the Rings game where you're like you're the first one takes place on ruined earth where there are no people left. The second game takes place in this really kind of like fantasy land full of corruption and stuff and you're just like trying to go do stuff. Really cool. Had a, a Shadow of the Colossus kind of boss fight giant like thing, you know. Yeah. A lot of really fun stuff in there. Also the I never remember his name, but the guy that voiced Death was the guy that was like, he was the bad guy in The Crow. He was in Alien Resurrection. He's that guy that's got that really deep, raspy voice oh. that's in movies all the time. Yeah, I don't remember his name, but I know who you're talking about. Uh, you know, and that game had like kind of like Mass Effect style, like trees where you could, or not Mass Effect style, but you could just like ask people about stuff. Yeah. Great. Okay, third game, obviously Vigil Studios got dissolved and Madera and company are out doing Battle Chasers game. Third one got picked up by Gunfire Games. This is the story of Fury, uh, and she is coming to Earth during... Um, kind of during the apocalypse, like shortly after the the apocalypse kicks off. Oh, okay. Um, because death co- or war comes back way later, like way way later. Um, this game is trying to mimic Dark Souls, but it doesn't really know how. Um, a lot of people are probably gonna like this game, but like, I think that there is a thing that game companies look at Dark Souls. And they take all the wrong lessons from Dark Souls. Um, They see it and they see people say, this game is real hard. And they're like, so we're going to make our game real, real hard. Because this is a third-person game. You know, you're behind Fury. And she's got uh, a base attack, which is a whip, and then a few different elemental like states. So you basically have like a primary attack and then a secondary attack that depends on what elemental state you're in. And that elemental state also will – it affects like your ability – like the – She's got a fire form, right? Her hair is all orange, and she's got all this fire stuff on her. Yeah. And when she does that, when you jump, you can like do a boost jump where you use the fire to literally like blast up, right? So there's different types of traversal mechanisms that you have, but depending on the different elemental things, you get a ranged weapon at a certain point. Um, but you're doing the thing kind of in Souls where you're locking on to a character and you're kind of trying to dodge and counterattack and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, Fury herself can't really take that many hits. I mean, on normal without dying. And you have, like, a set number of healing items that will restore. It's kind of fucked up because, you know, in Dark Souls slash The Surge slash, you know, Lords of the Fallen slash Let It Die slash whatever, right? You have a certain number of healing items that reset when you hit a checkpoint, right? So if you get to a certain checkpoint, they reset. Here, when you hit the checkpoint, you'll come back there, but you don't ever refill your healing items. You actually get, like souls come off of enemies and they refill your items so to me it feels like a really stripped down version of dark souls the other thing is that there's no build variety in the game or there is but there are three attributes that you can add to health strength and arcane which is basically like when you i guess well when you do a dodge you have the ability to do an instantaneous counterattack that does a lot of damage and i think that that is primarily what arcane is the stat for that's weird (laughs) um your four main your your main uh, so you got your whip and then the it's like a glaive that you could throw and then the four elemental forms and each one of those can be socketed with like a rune and there's like six runes in the game so you can make a, like slight changes to the way that things in the game operate you can upgrade your weapons you can upgrade your runes you can do all that stuff yeah the problem with this game is that like if it's trying to be dark souls there's no build variety there's no stamina management there's no lore like there's even a hub where you go where you literally like rescue people and they'll go back to this hub just like you do in like dark souls 3 or dark souls 2 but those people don't have anything to say when you go back and you talk to them they're just like thanks fury you're the best and i'm like you had a an opportunity here to really like create a kind of a lure yeah. for this 
Um, because guess what? There there are like humans that are alive, right? As opposed to all the other games where there are no humans. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. A, a thing that could have been interesting, stamina management could have been interesting if the enemies didn't feel like they're so like you do not stun lock hardly any. The, the enemies can barely be stun locked, and most of them can basically just like block for infinity. However, uh, you don't even have a block. Like you only have a dodge move. That's dumb. And they literally their first patch was to expand the number of iframes, the number of invis- invincibility frames you have in your dodge move because it was too tight that people were like literally getting hit when they felt like they were dodging perfectly. It just comes off like a really like they like what they got out of Dark Souls was Dark Souls is third person and it's really hard and you have to dodge. But like in Dark yeah. Souls, let's say you're not that good at Dark Souls and you want to create a build that has like just hella health and heavy armor, right? Like a giant dad. Yeah. Two handed weapon, heavy armor, high poise, high strength. You're just gonna kinda muscle your way through the game. You're just gonna you know, you're going to beat the game down. Or let's say that you have more finesse and you want to do backstabbing, then you could create a dex build that's better for backstabbing. Or you could create a magical build that's better for magic. Or you could create a faith build that's better for faith, right? None of yeah. that stuff really exists in this game. It's just kind of like, well, there you go. Um, and the main problem that I had with it was the fact that Dark Soul, or Dark Siders <laughs> 1 and Dark Siders 2 were not excessively difficult games. Yeah. No. They were very accessible. They were kind of a medium grade game. Like they did have harder modes, but on medium, two thirds of the way through the game, I had to switch it from medium to easy because I just wasn't having fun anymore. And once I switched it to easy, the rest of the game was a cakewalk. Like the difficulty was not balanced very well for me in that medium was too hard, easy was too easy, and there was nothing in between the two of them. Oh, okay. Also, there's not really a lot of reason to go back and play. Like you think about how in Darksiders 2, you know, you had all this RNG loot that you could get for death, right? And you could get, like, weapons that you could feed other weapons to up their stats. There was, like, a lot of customization that you could get. Whereas in this one, there could have been customization. There's no armor. There's no equipment that I can tell. Mm. And the, the, the elemental powers that you get come after you beat bosses in very specific checkpoints in the game. So it's not like you can try to, like... Now you could say, I want to make a flame build, right? I'm going to make a build that works for the fire thing and makes the fire thing the most powerful. Yeah. You can't really do that. Like, Mm. because you can't, I mean, they're also weighted so that, like, let's say that the first one you get is the fire one, and the second one that you get is the lightning one, but the lightning one is, like, relatively as powerful as the fire one when you first get it, because otherwise you would get it, and the first thing you'd have to do is go spend a lot of upgrade materials to make it good. So it's just not that much variety. Add to that the fact that it, the game takes place on Earth, which is the the ruined Earth that we saw in Darksiders 1, and it's like, well, it's just a lot of bombed out buildings. And like there's a lot of demons and angels in these bombed out buildings, and like it's just not that interesting. Like a lot of the enemies, the angels and the demon enemies are very similar. There's some new enemies and they're interesting. You're fighting the seven deadly sins, and they're kind of interesting in their design. Uh-huh. Um but it's just not all that interesting. Add to that the fact that it's a very complicated map and you don't have a you have a compass. Like you just have a, a compass with one dot that is like where you're supposed to be going to. There's no like uh like track on the ground, you can't yeah. open up a map, you can't fast travel anywhere. And apparently the devs did this because they like they didn't want you to just run past the environments and not look at them, except that unlike souls, there's nothing to look at. It's just bombed out buildings and turned over ambulances. Yeah. There's no environmental storytelling here where you're going into somebody's keep and you're like, oh, well this was obviously by looking at this I can tell that there was something that happened here, you know? So the whole thing to me just kind of comes off as like, eh, you know, which sucks because the previous games should have been eh and turned out to be awesome. Whereas this one, I had an expectation because the last two games I really liked. And then I finally played it. It was just like, okay. Also, and this is, I'm not going to go into it, but like Fury's story is stupid. It doesn't make any sense. At the end of the game, huh. her motivation just goes completely out the window. and She's just like, this is what I care about now. And it's like, why? The entire game, you've just been like, I am Fury. I am mad at everything, and I will destroy you all. And it's like, at the end of the game, there's a character that's like, oh, Fury, you've changed so much. And I'm like, really? Because I haven't <laughs> seen any of that. Like, So weird. She makes this really inexplicable, this really inexplicable decision. There's this whole thing that is 
built up to at the end of the game. There's an optional boss fight with a character that I'm just like, who are you and why do I care? And why are you doing anything that you're doing? And like, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Yeah. So I don't know. It was just really disappointing. Like on top of that, it also kind of ran like, like a slog on the PS4. You know, the character designs were good. That was all Madeira stuff that he did before he left that he gave to Gunfire Games. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I see like so many people that are just like, I don't know. I thought it was fun. And it's just, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to be this guy, but like the game is $60 and like uh, there's better games. There's better third person action games for $60. Um, That's unfortunate. Yeah. I, I thought so too, because the thing is that they sold. 7,000 copies, I believe, a few days back. I was looking at 7,700, and they said if they get to 10,000, that's enough for them to make the fourth game, um, which at this point, I'm kind of like, I don't know if I want you to make that. Like, if this is yeah. if this was considered to be acceptable for the Darksiders franchise, I don't know if I want to see what you do with Strife Story because he's got guns, and I'm like, I honestly feel like that game should be a first-person shooter, but between the lack of interest, between the lack of a good story, the environment being kind of bland, the combat mechanics being very, very dumbed down. Considering, I don't know. I talked about this one time with Lord of the Fa- Lords of the Fallen, where it's uh-huh. like if you invoke Dark Souls, like if you decide that you're going to ape Dark Souls, then you can't be mad when I compare you to Dark Souls. Yeah, because you did this. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> like, you, you started this. <laughs> right. I didn't come in. I didn't say you have to make a Dark Souls. You could have made a Spider-Man game where her whip sword was all about. Flipping around in a different yeah. crazy environment, like it didn't even have like to be a dark Lords of Shadow or something, <laughs> right? Yeah, you could have done a lot of different things that would have been more interesting than this. And if you were going to go Dark Souls, then I would have expected um, the ability to do different builds, to do different things, to, to a reason to keep playing the game when I was done with it or play it again. Like I started playing Dark Siders two just. To, I had Dark Siders two installed, and after I finished three, I was like, I got to make sure that I'm not just looking through rose colored glasses. Start Dark Siders two. Dark Siders two starts out fucking death is on his pale horse, riding. He rides through this place. You get a bunch of acts or a bunch of the scythes. He goes to the crow father who summons himself as war. You kill him. You take the souls of the Nephilim that get blasted into your shoulder. You wake up in this you know Lord of the Rings land with these big. Dwarven looking motherfuckers who are like, there's corruption spreading. You've got to help us. And then he's like, I don't want to. And then, oh, I'll do it anyway. And, <laughs> la, 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 la. and you know, it's just, it's great. Like, from the moment that you go, that you hit the start button, it's a great experience. And Darksiders 3, like, you know what? Uh, in Darksiders 2, when the game loads up, it literally loads death to stand where you saved the game. And then it says, Darksiders 2, press the start button. And when you press the start button, he just turns away from the camera and you're instantly playing the game. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. That was fucking cool as it's shit. It's just like little cute, cool things like that that are good. Like, and in Darksiders 3, there was like, oh, well, the music is mixed kind of poorly in this section. And like the load times are really long. Like I don't fear dying, but I do fear long load times. But I got to a point where it's like, okay, if I hit a checkpoint right before the boss encounter... I just go let the enemies kill me because I want all my health back and they don't give it back to you. Oh, yeah. I'm not going into the boss arena with one health potion. So there. But then again, there was, an, uh, there was a place later in the game that had an insta-kill environmental hazard uh-huh. and then the checkpoints were so far apart from each other and then they do the Dark Souls thing where when you die, it just brings everybody back to life again, right? Yeah. So I was like, oh, what's that over there? And it was like, ah, you're dead. And I was like, what? Oh, uh, and I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, I guess I've got to run back from that place I was five minutes ago, and just either try to run past or slog through all these enemies yeah. to get back to where I was, just because there was an instant death." And I was like, "Okay, I don't even understand." And I didn't even understand what yeah. the instant death thing was. So that's real weird. I don't know. It's got like a seventy on Metacritic, and like both fans and people who played it, the professional critics, seem to be like, "Yes." good game go play it seems all right i mean always with caveats like i was actually watching a youtube video that was like in defense of dark side of the street and it's like well the story is poop and the environments are bland and the traversal kind of sucks and there's some low time issues and the textures kind of pop in at the wrong time and uh, <laughs> the soundtrack isn't great but the combat is pretty good and i was like what are you talking about Jesus. that's like a four out of ten what you just described right yeah, there that's uh that's a lot of a lot of stuff to say but right after with so, because there's also this narrative out there that I've seen in a few places, it's just like, well, game reviewers have shit on this game because game reviewers aren't any good at video games, and it's too hard for them, and I'm just like, I don't know. I thought it was too hard to be enjoyable 
and I'm not against hard games. But yeah. like I said, in Dark Souls, in Bloodborne, if it's hard, you can keep putting points into health, and then it gets less hard, right? In Dark Souls, you can wear heavy armor if it's too hard, and it becomes less hard. It's so weird. Anyway, so I don't think it was very good. Um, and that, I believe, is our show for this week. So, <laughs> unless you have anything, do you have anything you want to talk about before we, do we jump out here? Uh, I guess we can just talk about the Avengers trailer real quick. Oh, yeah. Do you want to do that? <laughs> well, boy. As well. We're doing it in reverse order. <laughs> yeah. Since, since, they, uh, since the internet might, was probably going to ask what the fuck happened with that, uh, uh, they finally announced the, the Avengers uh, fully, uh, fully announced the title, basically, with the trailer. Was it Endgame? Yes. It's just called Endgame. It's funny because I remember, yeah, the, the Russos are like, no one's guessed it. And it's like, everyone fucking guessed that. <laughs> Uh, change, we'll change it at the last second, but it's it's not too it's not too much that it shows really. It's just Tony Stark floating in space and uh, talking to his helmet as a message to Pepper. Yeah, and everyone being sad about the ending of the the first one, basically. Yeah, Hawkeye. We see we see some Hawkeye because um, he wasn't in the last one. Yeah, so he's he's wearing his Ronin outfit apparently. Yep. Uh, Steve shaved. So oh yeah. Neat. Yep. Uh apparently he he shaves when he's sad. <laughs> you know what I what kind of sucks about this trailer though is that like um uh Ant-Man and the Wasp ended on a cliffhanger for Infinity War and like well, I mean I I guess yeah. I didn't think they were going to kill Ant-Man, but on the other hand like it's just kind of funny that like the last like the 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 hook of the of the fucking trailer is Paul Red going, "Hey, yeah. I'm here." Yeah. Let me in, please. Uh, yeah, I got a van. Also, I don't know why. Why was was Steve just real sad in the last movie? Like he's like got his hair combed back and he's shaved. He looks a completely different character. In yeah, this. he looks completely different, but now he just looks more depressed. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you know, we'll we'll see in April. Like I don't know. I uh, I really liked Infinity War. Uh, I actually, you know, I bought it. But I downloaded a 4K version because oh, I wanted okay. to watch it on my 4K of TV. You did. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I this is one of those things I'm where I'm excited still. I I, I want to see how it ends. I mean, you know, it's like somebody. Uh, uh, many people have said in the past that Infinity War or uh, this uh, Avengers. This is something that's never been done before, right? It was like 17 movies to lead up to Infinity War. It's crazy how many of it is. And then you know, it's the most ambitious fucking thing cinematic i've seen in probably ever yeah um it'll be interesting to see it all put to put to conclusion it uh, and then and then michael then we can all start having um like full arc watch parties right? oh yeah where you start with iron man one or maybe incredible hulk does incredible hulk count in the canon it does and it takes place right after iron man did it come out after Iron Man? Yes. Really? Yeah, it did actually. It came out before. No. It uh, came out after. Okay. It was a big deal when Robert Downey Jr. shows up at the end of it. So Was it Downey Jr. that shows up at the end or was it, yeah, was he shows it up Samuel at the Jackson? End. No, he shows up at the end of Incredible Hulk. Interesting. Sam Jackson shows up at the end of Iron Man. Uh, that's why that's why I know it came out afterwards. Okay. Because it was he a shows huge up a huge fucking deal when it happened in Iron Man. Right. I it's weird because um like they were still dipping their toe in. Like I always forget that Incredible Hulk is part of the MCU. Uh, yeah, it then, only gets it only gets mentioned like a couple of times. Like the the closest the the first time it tied into it since that movie was when General Ross was the same fucking actor, right? From yeah. it, and that was like the only other time. <laughs> yeah, but that's what makes it so funny. He's like, yeah, you guys did all this horrible shit, and then he doesn't mention the one thing he did, right? <laughs> Yeah. But so then we can. But how many movies? How many movies would that be if you start at Iron Man, and oh it would my god. be a fuck ton of them. Oh my god! I don't even want to start counting how many that would be. Uh, let's see. It's like days worth of movies, by the way. <laughs> I think it would be. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's let's just do a brief thing. We're here at the end. Anybody who's still listening is just yeah. like eh, whatever. Um, okay. So here we go. Uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Do, 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 do. Can I get a list? Okay, here we go. <laughs> list of Marvel Cinematic Universe films. Um, boop, boop, boop. Fuck me sideways. Okay, let's see. Uh, it'd probably be easier to look at it from up here. Okay, so we have Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America, uh, Avengers, Iron Man 3, Dark World, Winter Soldier, Guardians, Age of Ultron, Ant-Man, 
Civil War, Doctor Strange, Guardians Volume 2, Homecoming, Ragnarok, Black Panther, and then Infinity War, and then Ant-Man and the Wasp, and then Endgame. That's 20 fucking movies. 21 <laughs> movies, two, at least two hours, if not more, apiece. You're looking at right around 40 hours. That's not even counting the TV show, uh, anything that comes out of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or the little side things they made. Oh, yeah. I don't, wasn't counting any of that. Still, but that's, like, like, that's a shit ton of movies. It's a full goddamn work week worth of movies. It's a lot. If you went to work and watched Marvel movies, it would take you from Monday at 8 a.m. until Friday at 5 o'clock. To, and actually, you'd have to work a little overtime on Saturday. It's pretty, it's pretty intense. You'd have probably much come in on Saturday to watch uh, probably Black Panther and Avengers. Maybe even Thor Ragnarok. But like this is the season finale of all the original shit. Is yeah, what Endgame is, and then we just got a bunch of like extra stuff after that. that after that, so, and I think it'll be really interesting fuck. though to see what happens. What happens post Endgame? Because like I feel like I know I could f- you could feel the tingles of how they might be setting up to move forward. But then it's like, do they? Do they essentially move forward with like the new generation, or do we just reboot this entire thing and start over back in whatever the fuck Iron Man came out it's, like? It's tough because you know you have the Spider Man coming out right after. Oh yeah, uh, as well as uh, a couple other movies that were announced that were still Doctor, being made. This, this Doctor Strange too. Yeah, there's supposed to be another Doctor Strange. There's a new Black I think Panther. There's another Black Panther as well. And then didn't they just announced there's an uh, uh, another. It's like a. Um, Oh shit! Before Endgame was Captain Marvel, so fuck. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, because there was a trailer for that too last week, Peace right? Anyways. Yep. Oh my god, there's so much. <laughs> there's too many. There's too many things. All right, well we're gonna wrap it up because there's too many things, and we gotta go. We gotta go start watching Marvel we gotta movies, get man. Out of here eventually. We got we got 40 hours of Marvel movies to watch, man. We gotta, we gotta get started now. Mailrace.com is the email address. Michael, you can be found over at one of us and, and uh, uh, Geek Bombast. Geek Bombast. With yep, with with John and Amanda. Uh, thanks everybody for listening to this exceptionally long but woefully rambling podcast and we'll see you next week. Bye.